Kakriya sir, please unmute yourself. Yeah, okay. Am I audible now? Right, sir, clearly. Right, okay. And uh, is my screen visible? Visible, just expand it. Ah, okay. Great. I have expanded it now. Right, okay. So thank you, Dr. Shubha, Dr. Pandey, Dr. Sanjay Londe. And uh, a very, very, a, a very special warm welcome to Dr. Alamdari, who has already joined from Iran. I thought he's going to join after about an hour or uh, hour and a half, but he's there and I'm happy to see him. Uh, so let us uh, begin our today's Gnan uh, Satra with the prayers to Lord Ganesha. Today is happy Ganesh Chatur Chaturthi. So with prayers to the Lord of wisdom and knowledge. And uh, since there is a cyclone which has already started here in Bhavnagar, let us also pray the Vignaharta that the power or the internet does not fail here for next three <laughs> three hours in Bhavnagar. If at all it fails, Dr. Ramesha and Dr. Alamdari uh, and Dr. Uh, Deepak Gulwalkar, you please take over. Of course, I made arrangement for backup power up to three hours, but if net fails, if at all the, the cyclone has started. At the outset, I my, express my sincere gratitude and thanks to National Integrated Medical Association, Maharashtra State Branch, as well as the Central Council. And uh, in Hindustan, this situation already come. Gargar Corona, Gargar Corona. And if we want to save our family, ourselves, and our patients in the third and the fourth wave, and if you wish to avoid this same situation happening once again, in the next waves, I think it is much better for all of us to understand uh, about the weapons which we already have, the Brahmastra or Indrastra, Vajrastra, there are already nine weapons we already have. This virus is so tiny and so fragile that it can be so easily killed even by soap water that if we have the right understanding and the right open mindset, we can kick this out, kill this virus very easily and we can win the war over this virus. And there are nine weapons which can be used as a shield or as a sword. And today we are going to focus mainly on methylene blue. So uh, as Dr. Deepak Golwalkar has already been introduced, he is the guru, he's the pioneer of using methylene blue for various infections, including the tuberculosis from uh, as early as 2004. And uh, we, uh, we are very lucky to have him here. Uh, as well as Dr. Ramesh Shah, a nice surgeon from Bombay, Dr. Mash, Dr. Dareyush Hamid Alamdari is the Associate Professor of Medicine at Mashhad University of uh, Medical Sciences, Iran, is with us. It's a pleasure. I also acknowledge that whatever I'm going to speak is on the behalf of uh, all these doctors whom I have mentioned here, plus about uh, 80 to 90 other MDs from whom I have received the feedbacks uh, on Midland Blue from all over the nation and the world. And also would like to uh, mention an acknowledgement of uh, Advocate Sanjay Paranjapi from Bhavnagar. He is a 180 times blood donor, he's a philanthropist, and he has distributed more than four lakh bottles of methylene blue free of cost in Gujarat under the guidance of Dr. Gurwalkar. Uh, Dr. Rajesh Dere in the last webinar gave us an excellent feedback who is the Dean of uh, BKC COVID Care Mega Center that they have used intravenous methylene blue in 300 severely sick patients. The admission time decreased by half, mortality has dec decreased uh, by 80%, uh, I mean from 80% to 25%. Uh, and uh, Rajesh Bhav Tope, the Health Minister of Maharashtra was also present in the last meeting and I have heard from Dr. Subarao that they are uh, more and more uh, using methylene blue now in uh, BKC. The news about the use of methylene blue in BKC is already coming out. And uh, this is me. This is my hospital here in Baunagar. Basically, I'm an eye surgeon. Uh, these are some of my books. Uh, I'm a writer in Gujarati. I'm an eye surgeon, but I took a uh, 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 since my daughter is an MD and uh, ICU in charge in New Jersey. And she is a COVID specialist, and my son is also in COVID duties, and I also uh, treat some of the doctors. So I have gathered my knowledge from all these uh, sources, which I'm going to share with you today. Uh, and I also started writing a book about Mithlin Blue, the Blue Magic. 
and the blue book has been divided into nine uh, chapters and my talk is also i have divided into nine uh, powerpoint presentations as chapters so we'll go one by one now mitlin blue is a wonder drug with a use of over 144 years but many many qualified doctors are not aware of this drug and its potential many of them are not even ready to believe that mitlin blue is a drug and most people believe that methylene blue is a dye to stain cells in laboratories either or to color jeans, denim and cotton fabric. But if we go to Wikipedia and read about methylene blue, the first sentence you read about is that it is a methyl thionium chloride, which is a salt. Just remember these words. It is a salt used as medication and dye. So the first purpose of methylene blue is medication. The second purpose is the dye. So primarily it is a medication, secondarily it is a dye. Now as a medication, it is mainly used to treat myth hemoglobinemia. Now this is the condition which is occurring in COVID disease on after fourth or fifth day because COVID viruses are hungry for hemoglobin. They convert oxyhemoglobin into myth hemoglobin and this myth hemoglobin is no more able to take up the oxygen. No matter how much oxygen you pump in the lung, but the hemoglobin will not absorb that oxygen and transport it to, to the tissue. So in spite of giving 100% FiO2, very high volume of oxygen, the, the SpO2 does not improve. That's mainly because of the methemoglobin, because the virus converts oxyhemoglobin into methemoglobin in the process of the inflammation, which it induces. It has previously been used for cyanide poisoning and it is typically given by injection into veins. So those people who believe that methylene blue is not a drug, please start believing that it is an injectable drug. And it is on the World Health Organization's list of essential and safe medications. So uh, about which we'll discuss. There are many doctors who sometimes they comment ki vishan cha prayog karna saathi kyo? Matlab, vishka prayog apne kyo karna hai? Some of the doctors, uh, you know, uh, they gave this feedback to us. Now, for the information of everyone, it is not a wish, it is not a poison, it is the antidote for the poison. And for what poison? It is the antidote for the world's most deadliest poison, the cyanide, potassium cyanide and uh, uh, sodium cyanide. So, methylene blue is the only antidote which can rescue the patient from the methemoglobinemia induced by cyanide poisoning. It is also an antidote for altitude sickness because what happens when you go on a very high altitude mountaineering above 18,000 feet, the oxygen is so thin over there that oxygen at, at uh, mean sea level is 21%, but once you cross 18,000 to 20,000 feet in Himalayan ranges or in Alps, the oxygen decreases to 12% to 13%. So the, there is very low oxygen available and that leads to hypoxia in the mountaineers. So, methylene blue, they take methylene blue tablets with them uh, to prevent the hypoxia. The use of methylene blue in severe coal gas poisoning, that is carbon monoxide poisoning, because carbon monoxide has a very high affinity for the oxygen, about 160 times more affinity for hemoglobin compared to oxygen, and it does not dissociate, but it is the methylene blue which can reverse the methemoglobin induced by carbon monoxide poisoning when given in intravenous. As to the COVID, Methylene blue has already been has already been proven as a reliable photochemical treatment for inactivation of SARS-CoV-2 plasma viruses, about which we'll talk in discuss in the future chapters. Methylene blue has a potent antiviral activity against SARS-CoV-2 in absence of the UA activation in vitro. This paper we'll discuss at length, which is published by Valeria Kaino and her team. She is a very famous virologist of Europe uh, from University of Geneva. The paper was published on 14th August. Also, there's one interesting paper which has come up from University of Miami, Florida from Dr. Damir. Now, according to this paper, methylene blue inhibits the SARS-CoV-2 spike, uh, SARS -CoV spike protein to ACE2 protein-protein interaction. That means uh, uh, the, the, the virus has a, has a key to enter to the cells and the lock is ACE2. So ACE2 receptors can be opened for the viral endocytosis by the spike protein, but methylene blue denatures the spike protein number one, and it also blocks the ACE2 receptor. So, jo chabi hai, usko bhi tod diya, methylene blue ne, aur jo tala hai, uske andar, chedme, bar diya. So the, the lock is blocked, 
not to be opened and uh, the, the viral spike protein is also destroyed. So methylene blue has a great relevance in the treatment of uh, COVID disease and this is the US National Library of Medicine, the Registry of Clinical Trials, wherein methylene blue treatment of COVID-19 is already registered, it's going on if you read this. Uh, it's in phase two uh, clinical trial in the treatment group. They, have, they are using methylene blue 100 milligram capsules twice a day for five consecutive days. And also, Dr. Alam, and this is a, a phase two trial which is going on, but Dr. Alam Dari has already completed phase one, two, and three trials and he's going to speak about it today. Uh, this is Dr. Darayush Hamid Alam Dari's paper, which has been uh, recently published about his uh, phase three clinical trial in Aristotle Biomedical Journal from Greece. And uh, uh, his colleague, Dr. Bharat Bhushan, probably he's also going to join us from Texas University of uh, uh, United States of America. And we are going to discuss this paper at, at detail. Now there's another interesting paper which has come up from France and Italy. In, uh, in France, there is, they studied a cohort of cancer patients with no reported cases of SARS-CoV-2 infection. Now, what, uh, what this paper, if you read in detail, says is that they studied 6,000 patients who were in cancer treatment in France at various hospitals. Now, out of these uh, 6,000 people, 2,500 French patients were on Midland Blue as a chemotherapy, as a part of their cancer chemotherapy, because methylene blue tree is, is a part of the chemotherapy for breast cancer, for prostate cancer, and for osteosarcoma of femur. So methylene blue was a part of their chemotherapy for 2,500 out of these 6,000. So these 2,500 people in whom methylene blue was going into their body as a part of the chemotherapy, none of those 2,500 patients over a period of one year developed COVID infection. Whereas the remaining 3,500 people who were given chemotherapy without methylene blue for other kind of cancers, 70% of them developed COVID disease and 70% of those, they died. So it's almost like 49% mortality where in cancer patients when methylene blue was not given. So, and uh, yesterday uh, <clears throat> I learned that Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute and Research Center in South uh, New Delhi, they have already started using methylene blue as a prophylaxis for their cancer patients who are comorbid. If you Google methylene blue for the treatment uh, of COVID-19, you will find more than 5,000 publications, 18 lakh plus references, and in 144 years of use, and research 128 years of publication, more than one crore references you will find. And the first paper published about methylene blue was in the Lancet. And the, the, the publication was as early as September 30, 1893. So it's a drug which has 128 years of history of publication, 144 years of uh, research and use. And the methylene blue injections are made in India by four major companies, about whom we will be talking in detail. And today's webinar is uh, co-sponsored by Flagship Biotech uh, International. This is a large company in India who makes and exports to 75 countries, methylene blue and 700 other products. It's a WHO <coughs> GMP certified company. Uh, Mr. Shailesh Patel, the MD of this company, is going to join us with his team. <coughs> In USA, there are there are many companies uh, who um, uh, who make methylene blue as injection. In UK also, in Europe also, every country methylene blue is available as injection. Methylene blue is one percent solution for food, drug, or medicinal use. Also, is available in USA, manufactured by Biofarm Incorporation in <coughs> Hartfield, Arizona. In USA. It's also available in US as Uribel capsules for urinary tract infection, which contains 10 milligrams of methylene blue in each capsule. It's also available as a tablet, 10.8 <coughs> milligram in USA. It is also available as an anti-aging cream because methylene blue has an excellent property of reversing the skin aging. And in one study of uh, done by University of Maryland in USA, they painted half of the face with methylene blue and in 15 days, 
<clears throat> you can see the result, all the creams of the collagen tissue is gone and the face becomes jewel, uh, face becomes 10 years younger again. It's also available as a derma application, available as a mist for spray into the nose and into perinasal sinus activities. It's also available as eye drops. It's available as eye drops on over the counter in Amazon uh, USA. It must be safe, otherwise the US government will not allow the sale on Amazon. <clears throat> it's also available as eye drops in Egypt. And this is the list, the WHO's model list of essential medicine. Now, this list is listing the most efficacious, the most safe and most cost effective medicines for priority public health conditions. So this list uh, is obligatory for all the member nation governments of the United Nations members as well as the WHO member countries that they have to keep all these essential and safe medicines in ample stock without much tax at a very competitive and affordable price. And if you look at this list, if you read this at the number 4.2.4 entry, it is the methylene blue methylthiamine chloride injection of 10 milligram per ml in 10 ml m2 list to be kept for the reversal of cyanide nitrite and uh, carbon monoxide poisoning in all the all the chemical companies where these chemicals are used they have to keep uh, several 500 to 1000 injections in ready in stock so it's uh, it's it's a safe medication and listed on uh, who's uh, essential list of medicine along with acetylcysteine atropine or oral rehydration solution and uh, along the, also with paracetamol so and this is an interesting paper which has come up the methylene blue revisited i sincerely urge all of you to read this paper just go to google and pre type this number pmc3087269 the paper is published by dr prashant Guinea and this is published in 2010, but it's so relevant because everything you need about methylene blue uh, uh, in relation to COVID was already predicted in 2010 by Dr. Prashant Guinea who is the head of the department of anesthesiology at Belgam Institute of Medical Sciences, Karnataka. It's a wonderful paper, and everyone should read this paper. And the drug repurposing is not uh, a new phenomena. We know that aspirin, minoxidil, metformin, all these drugs were actually synthesized for different purpose, but then we found a good use and we repurposed these drugs as, as well as uh, it is the doctors as a clinician or as a treating physician, it is the doctor's prerogative that with the consent of the patient and with his uh, good information, he can repurpose the drug and can use any medicine as an off-level use. And uh, uh, Lord Krishna has given us a promise, Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. So sometimes I feel that Mithilin Blue, he has come with Mithilin Blue as the Sudarshan Chakra. And when you listen to my remaining part of the other chapters of the talk, you will realize that it is true. And it is interesting to know that the Chakra, the wheel which guards our nation in the center of our flag, the Ashok Chakra with 24 spokes, which is guarding Indian nation, Indian nation for 24 by 7. Now, this chakra is printed in our flag with the dye, which is methylene blue. And have you ever thought that all our savior gods, be it Mahadev, the Nilkant, be it Vishnu, be it Hanumanthji, be it Sri Ramchandraji, or be it Sri Lord Krishna, all of them are painted blue. Why? There must have been some indication. They are related their relation to the skies, maybe their relations to the ultraviolet cosmic energy, and probably I feel maybe between blue. I mean, it's my thought. Now, without knowing the history, we can neither know nor create the future. So let us uh, go to the chapter of uh, Mithlin Blue's history. Uh, <clears throat> it has a very interesting history, which I have learned from the time of uh, Baroda Medical College, my undergraduate days when I was uh, at Baroda Medical College and what I've learned in past 35, 40 years, I'm trying to compile, compress everything in about two hours time in my lecture. Now, Mithil Blue is, is a plant which is a native to India, Indigofera tinctoria is the name of the plant, like the Hina, when you squeeze it, 
uh, it gives you uh, a brown color or a, or a maroon color juice. Uh, indigo ferrat tinctoria, when you squeeze it, it gives you a, a blue color juice. And uh, this, uh, we know this plant as Neely. And uh, in Ayurveda, in almost all the Grantha, Nigantu Grantha of Ayurveda, the Mithilin blue is mentioned as Neely or Neely Nee. Uh, like in Kayadev uh, Nigantu, in Danvantari Nigantu, in uh, uh, Bhava Prakash, in Raj Nigantu, and in Dravagruna Vignan, everywhere Nithilim blue has been mentioned in its natural form. Nili, Kikta, Rasecha, Urshana, Kativat, Kaf, Apaha means it is a Kaf ko Apah, matlab, it removes the Kaf. Uh, Kesha, it uh, increases the hair growth. Vishodaram, Haranti. मतलब विष में अगर आप कोई आदमी के उधर में विष चला गया है तो इसको ये हंटी करती है वात सुक्रू क्रूमिनाशिनी सो मिथिल ब्लू इज नॉट न्यू इट इज यूज्ड इन इंडिया सिंस लास्ट 5000 इयर्स एज एन इंडिगो पाउडर एंड इट्स इवन टुडे अवेलेबल एज इंडिगो पाउडर फ्रॉम वेरियस कंपनीज इन इंडिया एंड द हिस्ट्री गोस uh, is that I mean, Mithil blue was also being uh, used from India to Egypt, and in Egypt, when the pharaohs they died, they wanted to preserve the bodies, so the whole body was dipped in the solution of uh, indigo tinctoria. The entire body will absorb Mithil blue, and since Mithil blue is antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal, the entire mummy will become desiccated and blue but it will not decay for thousands of years in spite of being in the pyramid in the basement of the pyramid where it is damp and cool environment but the fungus does not grow so mithlin blue indigo uh, juice is the principal chemistry which is used for mummification of the body uh, in egypt and it used to go from india uh, in 1859, and there occurred a farmer's revolt against the British uh, plantation owners and the British government because indigo was going from India to Europe as a medicine and as a dye. And the name indigo itself is because it was going from India, Indi and Go. So after the 1857 revolt, the mutiny revolt of the sepoys of the British Army, British Indian Army, uh, the farmers revolted in 1859, which is known as Nil Vidro, Yant Bharat So Indigo Rebellion actually made the supply of Mithilin blue to Europe irregular and it made it very costly. As a result of it, the European chemist scientists started searching how we can synthesize Mithilin blue. Uh, so, I mean, yes, how we can synthesize Indigo. And Henry Caro, a German chemist in 1876, uh, was the first person who could synthesize the indigo. And that synthetic indigo was named as Mithilin Blue. And this was the first man-made fully synthetic chemical, the first man-made fully synthetic medicine, first antibiotic and first ever fully synthetic dye. And Henry Caro is considered as the father of the modern chemical industry. So the entire chemical industry is founded by Henry Caro's uh, synthesizing the indigo in the form of Mithlin blue. And soon after he synthesized the drug, Dr. Paul Ehrlich in his experimentation found that Mithlin blue was excellent for staining the bacteria for uh, staining fungi while seeing in the microscope. And then he realized that when he stains the blood of the patients of malaria, the falciparum gametes, they would oxidize, they die. So he started using methylene blue intravenous and oral for the treatment of malaria in 1881. And he was the first to find cure of syphilis using methylene blue, first to make antidiphtheria uh, gargled by methylene blue and then he developed antiphyric serum also. Was, uh, he was the first to find the cure for gonorrhea and he coined the names antimicrobial chemotherapy and he coined the name magic bullet for the methylene blue. He saved millions of lives and as a result of his great work, he was awarded uh, Nobel Prize. I mean, uh, he coined this term, uh, he acronym methylene blue as MB 
and he also acted in a Muslim blue as magic bullets, so MB and MB. So Muslim blue is the magic bullet because it, it bombards electrons on the surface of the microorganism. It kills the microorganism without damaging the human cells. So that's why it's, the name is magic bullet. He was awarded Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1908. So Muslim blue is a drug which is synthesized in 1876 in use for 144 years, which has been recognized by the Nobel Prize Committee. Dr. Albert, Albert uh, Ritterwan Mossetig and Murhoff, he was the professor and head of general surgery at University of Vienna in Austria. He, was in, he is the inventor of the first aid kit. He is also inventor of the tincture of iodine for war wound disinfection. He is the prime pioneer of intramuscular injection of methylene blue in 1877 for the treatment of osteosarcoma of femur and it is mentioned in Materia Medica of Homeopathy by John Henry Clark. Now he's a very interesting physician. He was an MD in allopathic medicine and also MD in homeopathic medicine. And he is the one who has wrote the main textbook of homeopathy, the Materia uh, Medica. And in, in this Materia Medica is mentioned the entire experiment of uh, treatment of osteosarcoma femur by methylene blue by Dr. Uh, 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 Dr. Van uh, uh, Murkoff, uh, and it's it's still as as a chapter. I have been very lucky to be associated with Dr. Deepak Golwalkar, who has been using methyl blue for treatment of XBR and MDR tuberculosis. He saved so many lives at the time of uh, pandemic of uh, swine flu, and he has saved more than six thousand lives in last uh, one year. And at the age of uh, 70, he is treating 80 to 90 patients of COVID every day. He never uses mask. He has made himself a guinea pig, a human guinea pig. That methylene blue is so powerful and so protective that in spite, at the age of 70, in spite of not using mask, in last one year, neither me nor my staff of medical and paramedical, 100 people staff, none of them have developed COVID disease in last one year, and it's lucky that he is with us. I also learned from a lot from Dr. Anil Patel, uh, who started intravenous methylene blue for COVID in India. He is from uh, Surat, a very eminent physician. If you recall, we used to apply the fountain pen ink when we were in school, when we used to develop sty in the eye. And in, in 24 hours, the sty would die because the methylene blue will kill Staphylococcus aureus. And uh, methylene blue was the part of the fountain penning, not the ball penning, but the fountain penning. And we used to apply methylene blue to the kids or to ourselves when we had the sports wound uh, lacerations in the, in the school. Methylene blue is used as an antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral to prevent cross infection between the fishes uh, in the aquarium. A domestic aquarium as well as professional, municipal, and the national aquariums in, in all the countries. Methylene blue every day is used. The second purpose of using methylene blue is that the uh, fishes in the confined environment do not suffer from the hypoxia. So methylene blue is the oxygen giver. It is a killer of the virus, fungus, and the bacteria in the aquarium. It's, and that use is still going on everywhere in the world. So now let us examine the mechanism of actions of methylene blue, how it is relevant for uh, the COVID disease. But uh, before that, I would like to uh, uh, urge you all, since you all are general practitioners, that you have to mentally differentiate two types of corona. One is uh, COVID URI or COVID coriza, that is upper respiratory tract infection. As long as the viruses do not cross your voice box or larynx, you are fine because the upper respiratory tract infection is bulle bulle corona. Most of the patients and almost 100% of the patients, they come out of it in uh, eight to nine days. But if the virus crosses your voice box, goes into the trachea and descends into the lungs and then spreads into the blood and, and the virus is lung bone or uh, uh, blood bone, and this is COVID uh, lower respiratory infection, that is pneumonia induced by COVID and this is very bad and it's Murivalle Corona. The, the first one, upper respiratory Corona is Bulevalle Corona, but this is Murivalle Corona and uh, we don't want the viruses to cross, I mean to enter your uh, respiratory system, number one, but if at all it has entered, we don't want 
the virus to cross your voice box. We want to kill them when they are still in the nose and in the oropharynx by use of methylene blue. There are a number of publications about inactivation of SARS-CoV-2 virus in human plasma and in human tissues by methylene blue. You can read all these papers at length. They give you so much of information and it's not now, it's published from 2005, the SARS-CoV-1 virus, the first epidemic. So methylene blue has been proven to kill this corona group of virus by oxidation, not now, but before 16 years. And the same findings for SARS-CoV-2 also has been confirmed by the recent research from Hangzhou University from China, published on 17 March 2020. And also by this paper published by Valeria Kaino from University of Genoa. Uh, now let us learn that in the inflammatory state, there is a severe oxidative stress. This is what we learned from Dr. Uh, Alamdari in the last webinar. And the it's it's a vicious cycle you know the oxidative stress produces a reactive oxygen species and it the reactive oxygen species produces more and more inflammatory mediators the cytokines they produce more inflammation so when there's more inflammation there is an activation of the inflammatory cascade so the the oxidative stress is inducing a vicious cycle of the inflammation which is leading the patient to a severe cytokine storm and that that leads to a sudden downhill progress of the patient uh, uh, from day six onwards. And uh, we want to kill that. Now, uh, the way methylene blue works is this. This is what again we learned from Dr. Alamdari. We didn't know this. Methylene blue, uh, uh, which is blue at room temperature, which is an oxidized form, it is already containing the oxygen, which goes into your blood and enters into the red blood cell and the cells. Inside the cytoplasm, these enzymes, the pentose phosphatase pathway, the flavin reductase, the glutathione reductase and cytochrome, cytochrome B5. These uh, four enzymes, they convert methylene blue into leukomethylene blue. And then it is the leukomethylene blue, which is the electron donor, which is bombarding electrons on the viruses, as well as it is converting methemoglobin back into hemoglobin or oxyhemoglobin. And one molecule of leukomethylene blue can uh, convert innumerable molecules of hemoglobin back into methemoglobin. But the essence is this, the leukomethylene blue. So if you give methylene blue, oxidized form to the patient, the patient's body has to convert first it into leukomethylene blue, which is an additional oxidative stress. That's a great additional oxidative stress, which we should all avoid. So it is better always to convert the oxidized methylene blue into leukomethylene blue before giving it to the patient, so that the patient's body, which is uh, in a severe oxidative stress, is spared from this uh, stress. For a normal individual, who is not infected, who is not severely, severely inflamed, the CRP and the interleukins are within the normal range. For them, it's fine to take oxidized form of methylene blue, but for a patient who is in a high state of inflammation, it is not advisable to give oxidized methylene blue. They must be given leukomethylene blue. And um, if you study the difference between methylene blue and the leukomethylene blue, the leukomethylene blue has an additional edge hydrogen ion attached on the nitrogen ion in the central nitrosulfate benzene ring. Now, when this leukomethylene blue goes back to methylene blue status, it delivers a single ion of, single atom of, uh, sorry, single ion of hydrogen and two electrons. So this H ion is the proton beam. It, I mean, that is the proton. So H plus ion works as a proton beam and that is how methylene blue has, has a potent action to kill the uh, cancer cell as well as to destroy the virus. Second is that it donates two electrons. Now the scientific term is donation, but it is actually bombardment in my mind. And if you look at the virus after being exposed, to the leukomethylene blue, you will realize that the virus cell membrane has, I mean, virus lipid layer has already started being broken. Let us see it in a higher magnification. You can see here that the proton 
proteolipid layer is oxidized and the spike proteins are being broken off from its root. So, methylene blue, leukomethylene blue works as an oxidizer of the viruses as well as an electron bombardier. And there is another interesting phenomena which happens that when leukomethylene blue is in the blood, the reactive oxygen species which is producing the oxidative stress. Now, this oxygen is a free radical oxygen. The O2 is dissociated into O minus and O minus. So, there are two oxygen ions. Now, this oxygen ion, which is reactive species oxygen, snatches a hydrogen from here and as a result of which when the oxygen minus ion snatches hydrogen, uh, so two hydrogen ions and two oxygen minus uh, ions, they form H2O2. So, this is hydrogen peroxide which is formed intracellular and the hydrogen peroxide is the ultimate best disinfectant and it is the way by which our leukocytes kill the virus. All our lymphocytes, they produce hydrogen peroxide and ozone in the tissue and it is the hydrogen peroxide which actually kills the microbes. So, that is basically our defense mechanism. So, methylene blue, when goes back from leukomethylene blue to oxymethylene blue, by production of H2O2, it helps us <coughs> in uh, giving an additional protection by production of hydrogen peroxide. So, this is a wonderful drug. I mean, it's, it's a molecule which has so many benefits. There are 10 different ways in which methylene blue helps a patient of COVID. And uh, uh, now, the oxy uh, methylene blue goes back into the leukomethylene blue. Uh, form again by the body in a healthy person by flavin reductase and glutathione reductase. But in a patient, we can do this by uh, ascorbic acid or lactic acid or by giving acetylcysteine. So that we'll examine. Now, methylene blue 0.1% solution uh, looks like this. It is deep blue, but uh, when it starts going back to the leukomethylene blue, uh, it becomes pale sky blue color, this is about 50-50 leukomethylene blue, when it is 100% oxidized, I mean reduced, it becomes complete clear uh, solution. And uh, it is the leukomethylene blue, as I said, converts the uh, oxyhemoglobin into, I mean sorry, methemoglobin into oxyhemoglobin. So, leukomethylene blue ha, I mean, has multiple mechanisms of action. One is it is virucidal, as I said, it, it works as a bombarding, uh, I mean, electron gun bombardment plus production of hydrogen peroxide. It is antiviral, means it is virostatic because it makes cellular cytoplasm and extracellular fluids into an alkaline medium. And novel coronavirus does not replicate in alkaline medium, so it is virostatic and it is a growth inhibitor, the same way chlorine, uh, uh, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine uh, and the zinc, uh, elemental zinc works by converting the cytoplasm into an alkaline medium. And you'll be surprised to know that methylene blue is the great grandmother of hydroxychloroquine. This is the pedigree of methylene blue's uh, family. Methylene blue's daughter is quinine, quinine's daughter is chloroquine and chloroquine's daughter is hydroxychloroquine. So, if hydroxychloroquine helps, methylene blue helps it as a grandmother four times. Uh, this paper we already discussed, this has come from Dr. Damir uh, from University of Miami, uh, that methylene blue inhibits the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein attachment to ACE2 receptors. So, it has antiviral entry. So, it is antiviral, I mean it is virucidal, it is virostatic and it is antiviral entry. It prevents the endocytosis of the virus. Uh, leukomethylene blue, as we discussed, is the only chemical which is, uh, uh, which is the only drug to reverse the methemoglobinemia. And methemoglobinemia is the condition which is gradually induced. Just understand coronavirus for the sake of understanding that coronavirus is so hungry of oxyhemoglobin that it takes over the oxy part of it and converts it into methemoglobin. And this happens very slowly over a period of three to four to five days. Now, if I close your nose or mouth with some gag, 
within two minutes your spo2 will start falling down to 93 94 and then 90 the moment it crosses 90 you start feeling so much of chatpata hurt you know jaan ja rahi hai aisa feel hoga you will you will feel that your your life will be gone so that is acute hypoxia now acute hypoxia is never happy it it, it makes you uh, to save yourself but when this happens gradually the brain the neurons do not perceive the gradual loss of oxygen uh, concentration in the blood and that's why there is a happy hypoxia so first three days or four days the patients are very happy but if you measure every day their oxygen level is going down and when it goes beyond 75 percent then the patient starts becoming irritable and uh, fatigued so uh, it is the happy hypoxia, which is sometimes more of a killer and delayer of the onset of the treatment. And uh, glucomethylene blue helps in prevention and reversal of the happy hypoxia. And uh, you will be, I mean, I, here I just would like to differentiate uh, for you clinically, because even if you don't have a laboratory, you can just examine a COVID patient's blood on a white tissue paper and you know that whether it is methemoglobin or not. Oxyhemoglobin looks like tomato red. Um, uh, deoxyhemoglobin, which is the venous hemoglobin, which looks like the meat red, it is uh, bluish or purplish, but it's still red. Whereas the methemoglobin is chocolate brown. It's just brown like a chocolate various shades of chocolate brown, depending on how many percentage is there of methemoglobin in the blood. Now here, if you take it on a gauze piece or on a tissue paper, the fingertip blood, you will immediately find whether this patient is in severe methemoglobinemia or not. Here, this is methemoglobin, which is chocolate brown. This is oxyhemoglobin, which is uh, tomato red. And this is deoxyhemoglobin, the venous blood which is bit red, like a, like a bit. Uh, this is another example on the tissue paper. This is methemoglobin and uh, this is deoxyhemoglobin. And uh, there is a scale or a chart which is available. You can take a printout of it and just compare the blot which you have taken on the, on the blotting paper. And uh, you know approximate percentage of the methemoglobin in a patient's blood if you don't have a laboratory worker. And methemoglobin also speaks on the face and the skin. You can never miss it. If you just train your mind and your eyes to see methemoglobinemia in a patient of COVID, you can see it on their face. The luster of the skin is gone. They become more chocolatey brown or they become chocolate and bluish. So a COVID patient, and I know Dr. Deepak Golwalkar, he hardly ever waits for the RT-PCR or even rapid antigen. Just by looking at the face, he diagnoses that this patient's influenza-like symptom, are they of COVID or is it a normal uh, influenza or a normal common cold? And uh, when I sit with him within one hour or two hours, I see 20, 30 patients. So now I I also you know, pick up that, that from the face, I know that this is a patient of COVID or not. Also from the face, you can also diagnose whether the patient has recovered or not. Because when the patient recovers, the glow of the skin the skin becomes um, uh, pinkish again, the glow comes back and that silvery look of the skin goes back. So if you just train your mind, you can diagnose just by looking at face of the patient, whether this patient is Korean or not. You can you cannot miss methemoglobinemia just by looking at the face. You know, you, 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 if you look at the skin, if you look at the face, you can definitely diagnose this. And if you give in, uh, leukomethylene blue to this patient of methemoglobinemia. If the methemoglobinemia is a major component of the hypoxia, the patient goes back to normoxia within no time, 40-50 minutes, and the patient is pink again from the brinjal to the tomato red. Now, leukomethylene blue also has a fifth action with the anticytokine because upon chemical contact, it inactivates NLRP3 inflammasome interleukin-6, DNF-alpha, interleukin-1-beta, and interleukin-18. Uh, now, these are the cytokines which are released by the dying lymphocytes. It is the lymphocyte which has engulfed the viruses. One lymphocyte would engulf over... Excuse me, Dr. Kakriya, sir. Ji. 
uh, we respect your stamina i have some request that please uh, please ask akriya sir to take a small pause we continuous you are giving oh uh, <laughs> okay uh, let me finish this chapter then we'll take a no, pause uh, no issue sir no issue All right. Just request to your part that uh, please ask Kakriya sir. Okay, sir. Please continue. Okay, okay. Fine, fine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, leukomethylene blue inactivates the cytokines which are which are being released by the dying uh, lymphocytes. So it has a very good anti-inflammatory property, and uh, these are the papers which you can uh, read as an immunomethylene blue as an immunomodulator. I mean, it's actually immunomodulator, not an immune suppressant because it only it does not suppress the white blood cells it only suppresses the chemicals which are released by the dying white blood cells in the form of uh, cytokines inflammatory cytokines and this is another paper now methylene blue also has an excellent anticoagulant property because it prevents intravascular coagulation by reducing the platelet aggregation by blocking nitric oxide and cyclic gmp uh, enzyme pathway and uh, uh, so this way the lungs alveol alveolar microcapillary blockage is also cleared very rapidly it helps in clearing the pneumonia rapidly and it prevents the post covid thrombomolic coagulopathy which is a very big uh, uh, issue even after the patient has recovered from covid uh, the entire heart chamber becoming clotted or the pulmonary vasculature becoming uh, clotted or disseminated intravascular coagulation leading to hemiplegia leading to central renal artery occlusion leading to acute renal failure methylene blue also has uh, an action of prevention of septicemic shock which is the condition which is occurring when there is a severe viremia because there is there are two uh, or three chemicals which are secreted named bradykinin nitric oxide and cgmp these are the chemicals which are vasodilator they relax the smooth muscles of the arteries as a result of which the vessels they dilate and uh, they become vasoplegic they are refractory to any kind of medication no matter how much amphetamine or adrenaline you give they do not constrict methyl blue is the only drug which inactivates bradykinin nitric oxide and cgmp and as a result of which the vasoconstriction occurs so hypovolemic shock and hypovolemic shock leading to a vicious cycle of multi organ failure this is prevented or this is reversed by uh, uh, the methylene blue intravenous use and methylene blue is antidepressant also because it is a serotonin analog and that is a problem in a patient of uh, covid because of chemical imbalance in the in the body as well as isolation uh, patient is alone for 14 days uh, with a with a grave thoughts in the mind so they are already in depression the methylene blue is an antidepressant action so that is also a relevance and methylene blue is also pan bactericidal and pan fungicidal so being a very potent oxidizer oxidizer of microbial mitochondria and cell membranes it can prevent secondary lung infection and it can also prevent rhinocino orbito and cerebro mucor mycosis because it is pan uh, fungicidal so if used intravenous and uh, leucomethylene blue well in time uh, considering same indications and doses of intravenous remdesivir Uh, it will have same good outcomes as remdesivir or according to dr alamdari even better when remdesivir did not work they treated more than 600 patients in their three phase trials uh, and they found extraordinary outcomes uh, there is no need for expensive antibiotics like meropenem and uh, all those to prevent the secondary infection so about a 1500 uh, expense on methylene blue is equivalent of more than 1 lakh rupees of uh, expense on other drugs and uh, as far as the cost and the action is concerned methylene blue definitely has an edge over remdesivir because it is only antiviral this is uh, all many uh, uh, actions and methylene blue if you read uh, well you will find that it is a blue workhorse it also has an anti fibrosis action and it prevents post covid lung fibrosis and uh, many patients of covid after recovering they gradually develop fibrosis of the lung in the area where they had uh, ground glass opacities and they lose the function and uh, i know many youngsters who have been uh, from the last wave who have been denied the permanent residency of uh, us canada new zealand or australia because when they do the x ray 
in the medical examination before giving the visa, they find that there is fibrosis and the patient who has lung fibrosis is not given a visa to enter Australia or these countries. So methylene blue has a great potential to prevent antifibrotic action. There are papers which have been published that methylene blue attenuates the lung injury uh, induced by ischemia. These are the ground glass opacities. And uh, all these area eventually become fibrosed in two months to three months time and dysfunctional. And these fibrous area become the needles for repeated secondary infection like tuberculosis or uh, repeated other uh, infections. And if you look at the bronchoscopy, uh, you will be surprised in that I mean, the COVID secretions are highly in membranes. You know, it's like diphtheritic membrane. They are so sticky, they are so scaly, as if they are dried follicles. And uh, if you look at the normal influenza uh, infection in bronchoscopy, you will find that it's, it has a uh, you know, frothy mucus, which is more or less liquid or more liquid and with the effort, the patient will be able to expectorate it out and uh, as a bulgum, the bulgum nickels at that. But in case of COVID, there'll be no bulgum because it's all sticky. And let us see it in a video. Uh, this is the bronchoscopic video cuts in Dr. Bulwalkar. This is the video of a normal influenza where you can see that it is a liquid kind of a uh, mucin. Uh, which is frothy, which after third day or fourth day, the patient will be able to expect to read it out. But this is the bronchoscopy of the COVID patient. You can see that this is dry, this is scaled, uh, like the dried fevicol. And, and there is no way patient can expect to read this out. Uh, this can be broken and oxidized only by inhalation of the methylene blue along with hypertonic saline. Methylene blue and hypertonic saline together will liquefy this and convert it into a bulgum, which patient can expect to it out. So methylene blue has a relevance here also. And this is uh, one of the patient of Dr. Deepak Bulwalkar. You can see the extensive post-COVID fibrosis in the right lung and moderate post covid fibrosis in the left lung and this is after the treatment with methylene blue for two months to three months that you can notice that the post covid fibrosis has reversed and the lungs have become cleared this is another patient extensive fibrocavitation uh, fibrosis in the left lung and to a certain extent in the right also and this is the patient after methylene blue inhalation for three months uh, the fibrosis has reversed and Dr. Golwalkar has more than 3,000 patients treated like this. He has all the records. Uh, this is another patient of fibrocavitation extensive after pulmonary tuberculosis, miliary tuberculosis. And this patient, after 16 months of methylene blue uh, inhalation, has completely restored his lungs. And he was about to die in this stage in three to four months. And he had only three months to live but uh, he is now alive and you will be surprised in that Dr. Golwalkar is a coach of badminton. And, uh, he is a national uh, player at the age of 70, he is still coaching badminton. And uh, this patient who was about to die has become his disciple in, 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 and he, he is the student in badminton of Dr. Golwalkar. And Dr. Golwalkar also is an interesting person. He plays Santur and he is the disciple of Pandit uh, uh, Shiv Kumar Sharma and uh, quite often Pandit Shiv Kumar Sharma listens and Dr. Golwakar plays for him. And uh, this is the extensive uh, lung involvement. Uh, this is Dr. Golwakar's own mother at the age of 92. She stopped taking methylene blue after taking vaccine and she developed infection. And uh, this was on 27th of March, 2021. And after six days of uh, methylene blue treatment, you can see how much improvement she has in her COVID pneumonia. So, uh, and uh, there are so many research about antifungal action of methylene blue by destruction of mitochondrial dysfunction and disruption of uh, redox membrane. So as a result of which methylene blue has a great potential in uh, prevention 
uh, of mucormycosis, which is coming up as a second epidemic in India. Uh, mucormycetes, uh, mucoral mycetes indicus is ubiquitous. The spores are everywhere in the environment. Uh, you can find it on rotting uh, bread, on rotting food, rotting fruits. Uh, everywhere it's there. And this fungus is very hungry for methylene blue. So it absorbs methylene blue and it starts dying after taking methylene blue because mitochondria of the fungus is destroyed by methylene blue. So Dr. Golwalkar and his cousin brother, Dr. Dilip uh, Patwardhan from Sangli, they have started using methylene blue in the humidifier bottle when they give oxygen because uh, uh, methylene blue, I mean, the oxygen passing through methylene blue, all the spores present in the oxygen are destroyed here and the sterile oxygen goes. So it helps in both ways. Methylene blue micromolecules also help as well as the oxygen becomes sterile when it passes through. This is a great innovation done by Dr. Golwalkar and Dr. Dilip Patwardhan from Sangli. And uh, as Benjamin Franklin has said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So we must prevent uh, ourselves like Dr. Golwalkar has prevented himself in spite of treating 80, 90 patients. So if we want to prevent like Dr. Golwalkar ourselves from getting COVID or our own family from getting COVID, how should we? We must open our minds and heart to methylene blue, read about it. And uh, there is ample literature available. Uh, you can just open and if, if you think positively about methylene, you know that it is so easy and so simple to kill and kick out this corona. But there is no cure for a most dreadful, I mean, there is a cure for a most dreadful, dreadful disease, but there's no cure for a willing, willful ignorance. And a blind man can be made to see by corneal transplant, but a willful blind person cannot be made to see. But if you start seeing methylene blue in the right context, you will find that it is a wonder molecule. It is a blue magic. It's like a cosmic blue magic, in my opinion. And let us see what Dr. Gulwalkar is doing for prophylacting himself and his staff. And we just need to copy what he is doing. And uh, we will get the same result what uh, he is getting. I'm just sharing the information on his behalf and his experiences. There's no prescription, there's no advice. You please take your own decision after considering your own information level. We have no financial interest in any of the products, which I'm going to describe in the next uh, few slides. Now, the best form of prevention of uh, coronavirus is entering or causing disease in you is using it in the nebulizer form, cold mist or fog inhalation, not hot steam inhalation. 5 ml of 0.1% methylene blue solution to be nebulized and inhaled over a period of 10 to 15 minutes. Nebulization is best because it will cover not only your nasal mucosa and the oral mucosa, but it will cover all the sinuses, the spinodal, the frontal, the maxillary, um, um, and pterygoid uh, sinus also. So, Methylene blue nebulization is the only way to cover your paranasal sinuses, to cover your trachea, the lungs, as well as your oropharynx and the nasopharynx. So uh, I, I would personally recommend to have a nebulizer at home, or either Omron, Philips, or any company's nebulizer, whichever you get. Um, and there are two forms of nebulizer. One is based in uh, compressor base, which we have to plug in the electricity, a little bigger, so not easy to transport. If you are on frequent travel, the ultrasonic nebulizer is uh, much uh, better because it is a good battery. Once you, you recharge it, you can use it for five, seven days. Uh, and it's very compact and very portable, so you can carry it in your bag. Uh, and as I said, all the sinuses and the lungs and trachea, everything is covered by nebulization. So that is the best option in my mind. But we have to do it every day evening when you come back home from your clinic. You understand that you have come back with the virus in your nose and throat from some mm -hmm. other patient. You all are general practitioners. You must be seeing 70, 80 patients every day. So you believe that you have taken a virus every day evening when you come 
home and without break every day this should be your sleeping ritual this should be your evening prayer to take the muslim view nebulization that will protect you 100% and here i'm demonstrating i mean dr subarao is demonstrating how to do it so take uh, 5 ml of methylene blue 0.1% in the nebulizer cup put on the mask <clears throat> tighten the strap of the mask on your head and start the nebulizer and keep on inhaling and then you inhale take one inhalation from the nose second inhalation from the mouth so alternate your inhalation from nose and mouth so the mouth and nose move the both uh, covered. <clears throat> you can also take it from the nose after removing <clears throat> the mask. So this is uh, uh, an excellent nebul nebulizer she has. This is from Omron. Uh, if you don't uh, get a big nebulizer, there's another small uh, alternative which is available, which is quite portable, which is also rechargeable. Uh, it's available on Amazon and you can see the video how I use it. Of course, this is not as good as the mask one because the mask one gives you a much better penetration. Um, this is a second option, I would say. The first option would be definitely a professional nebulizer. Now, as you can see here, that 0 0.3 micron droplet of the methylene blue cold vapor is being formed by the ultrasound. And as you can see here on the piece of paper, that methylene blue is being evaporated. And this you can take and keep taking deep inhalation so that it goes up to your lung and keep taking deep inhalation so it goes into all your sinuses. Your mouth will become blue, but if you wash it with the face in, uh, with the water within uh, two to three hours, it goes away. And this is the reason, another reason why I personally take it in the evening after I come home so every day evening you paint your respiratory tract completely with methylene blue spray and you kill all the viruses which have come. So I'm uh, lucky enough, like Dr. Golwalkar, in spite of coming in contact with 70, 80 patients of ophthalmology, I mean eye patients and coming in contact with 8 to 10 patients of uh, COVID, um, I'm fine and my family is still fine for this whole year. And this is available on Amazon for a cost of 170 to 300 rupees. But of course, a professional nebulization is the best. This is known as nanomist sprayer. Now here I would like to bring to your attention that there is a no to vaporizer because this hot steam vaporizer will not work. The reason being that methylene blue's boiling temperature is 150 degrees centigrade, whereas the water boiling temperature is 100 degrees centigrade. So this works only when you are using a drug which is volatile. Volatile means the, temper, the drug which is boilable before the water boils. So you can use some kind of balm or some kind of menthol oil, that kind of uh, NAS you can take with vaporizer, but not methylene blue because methylene blue does not vaporize. It will vaporize at 150 degrees. If you burn the entire water of this, you will find that the methylene blue powder is residue still there as is. And if you put a tissue paper here on the steam, you will find that tissue paper becomes wet, but it does not become blue. That is a proof that methylene blue has not come, only the water vapor has come. So there is absolute no for vaporization, only nebulization. Just remember this. Now, the question comes to me, in every webinar is from where to get and how to make 0.1% methylene blue solution. Now in USA, methylene blue 1% solution is available from BPH. Uh, it is food grade, it is drug grade and for medicinal use. So this solution in USA is available. So if you are uh, able to get it, you can get 1% solution and dilute it 1 gem 10, 1 gem 9. So it will become 0.1% methylene blue solution. But those who are not in US, in India, from where to get. So uh, I'll uh, address this question uh, after I uh, address a few more slides uh, from where to get or how to make. So stay tuned till the end of this talk. Now, methyl blue per oral and as a nasal drops is the second number option, which is suggested by Dr. Golwalkar and uh, 
been used by many of his patients, so many of his patients who cannot purchase uh, nebulizer. But in my opinion, this is not an option as good as nebulization because I have personally seen quite a number of patients in this second wave, the very contagious and very virulent virus in the second wave. Those patients who are on two and a half ml of oral use, I have seen so many of them coming positive. At least five out of 100 will be coming positive. So in my opinion, this option is not as good as the nebulization. Nebulization is the only ultimate option to cover the entire respiratory tract. <clears throat> because the per oral drug will not reach in enough quantity in the lungs and will not cover your paranasal sinuses. Okay, Dr. Golwalkar's uh, slogan, Bhuri Dava Gar Lo Nirantar To Corona Rakhega Aap Center That is prophylaxis and Bhuri Dava Gar Mu Kender To Corona Ho Jai Chumantar That is treatment. So according to him, and uh, I know very well that he is true, uh, it is a sword and it is a shield. And there are enough number of literature which has been published. There are so many papers which have come up. Uh, we can calculate the dose from molar concentration uh, method, which is very complicated. So the simple method is uh, going referring to this paper from Valeria Kaino and her team from University of Geneva. According to her, 0 0.08 microgram per one milliliter <coughs> uh, methylene solution leads to three log reduction, 99.9% reduction of the viral load in the absence of daylight in the darkness. You don't need a photodynamic therapy. Or you don't need the UV light to excite uh, the methylene blue. Average human body of 70 kilograms weight has 50 liters of water. So 50 liter is 50,000 milliliters multiplied by 0 0.08 microgram. That gives us 4,000 micrograms. That is 4 milligrams. So 4 milligrams gets diluted and spreads in 50 liters of body water. A uh, little overdose is advisable because the bio, bio, bioavailability of any drug is never 100% and the drug purity even in a pharma grade is never 100%, it's around 98-99%. So about 10% overdose or 15% overdose is ad advisable. So a daily dose of 5 mg of methylene blue is what I recommend personally for my staff and my patients if they cannot get hold of nebulizer. Uh, this is capable of reducing 99.9% viral uh, load. So taking a total 5 ml of 0.1% methylene blue solution is likely a good preventive measure. And 0.1% means 1 gram, 1 milligram powder dissolved in 1 ml of water. Just remember the equation, 1 milligram in 1 ml. Just remember this because in future slides, this will become relevant. So for this double mutant, highly virulent strain, a 5 ml or 5 milligram of 0.1% methylene blue per oral once a day is the recommended dose because the upper max dose is 200 ml. So don't worry about the uh, toxicity. The toxicity dose is 400 ml. The max dose is 200 ml. We are just we are just taking 5 ml, so nothing to worry about. Now you have to measure once with a a syringe or with a dropper, which spoon in your family is 5 ml. And because the spoons have variable size and variable capacity, so just measure one particular spoon and that spoon becomes your measurements for everyday ingestion, everyday night. Or you can use this uh, spoon which is used in a uh, uh, you know, baking spoon for measuring the, the food uh, recipe components. And uh, this is what I calculated that for 70 kilograms of body, 50 liters of water volume in the, in the blood, we need 5 milligram of dose or 5 ml of dose. If a person is 100 kg, he should take 7.5 ml. If a person is 40 kg, 3 ml. If a person is 20 kg, then 1.5 ml. So this is the benchmark, 70 kilograms of body weight, 50 liters of water volume and 5 milliliters or 5 milligrams. So you can titrate your dose accordingly. Now the, let us address this question. How to get or make 0.1% methylene blue for prophylaxis? Now, if you go to Google, you will find so many different options. But my preference personally is to purchase an injection of methylene blue 
point one. Uh, uh, this is one percent. This is containing one hundred milligrams of methylene blue in ten ml. And you add this ten ml to a ninety ml of clean RO water or mineral water. So ninety ml of water with ten ml of injection will make point one percent methylene blue. This is the safest way because this is a US uh, uh, US pharmacopoeia grade. And this is the purest form because it's meant for intravenous uh, injection. What I do for my staff is we add, we break two injections and add it into a 200 ml of uh, mineral water bottle after we removing 20 ml from uh, 20 ml water first before pouring uh, the methylene blue injections into it. But otherwise, it will overflow and slightly become diluted. Uh, <clears throat> for getting methylene blue injection, you can contact any of these three persons from the flagship biotech uh, international. This is the company which is the largest manufacturer of uh, methylene blue injection and they are exporting in 70 countries. Uh, this is uh, another contact number uh, for, for Vulcan laboratory methylene blue injections. And this is another contact numbers for another company, Summer Life Science uh, Pharma, who are also manufacturing methylene blue injections. Now, if you don't get the injections, then the second option in my suggestion is to use methylene blue AR powder. The AR means analytical grade. There are two grades of methylene blue powder available, analytical grade and laboratory grade. Now, laboratory grade powder, I would not suggest for the reasons I will explain. The AR grade powder confirms to the pharma grade. And if you go to American Chemistry Association, um, American Chemist Society's website, they have given seven grades of the chemicals in which the reagent grade, that is analytical reagent grade is higher than the USP grade because this is for the quantitative molecular analysis. So they have to be very accurate. They have to have absolutely minimal impurities and the active drug has to be nearly 100%. So reagent grade is higher than the USP grade. So in my opinion, there's nothing wrong using an AR grade powder, which is usually available as a sealed bottle, black or brown sealed bottle in 25 grams quantity. So you can uh, get it. And here you can read this on American Chemist Society's uh, website. The, the laboratory grade is fifth grade and the technical grade is the seventh grade, which is industrial grade, which is used for dyeing the clothes, the middle and blue uh, industrial or commercial grade. You can ask any of the science college biology professor or higher secondary biology teacher from where they get methylene and blue analytical reagent powder in their laboratory and you will be able to get it in your city if there is a science college in your city. If you can't get from anywhere, you can contact Mr. Hittenbert. Uh, his numbers are here. His email ID is here. He will be able to help you getting the analytical reagent grade uh, powder from some standard or good companies. Uh, you can also contact Harshad Shah from this number. He is a manufacturer of the good grade uh, powder. And also, there is another company in Udaipur, Maxon Pharma. You can go to uh, website. I have uh, forgotten to put their numbers here. He is here in the audience. Maybe at the end, we'll uh, invite him to speak about uh, his powder. Now, here I'd like to bring to your notice that a pharma grade powder or an AR grade powder is, is crystal, micro crystalline. It is blue to green in color. Whereas the industrial grade dye is uh, brown or copperish brown in color because of the copper and zinc uh, impurities. So this powder is not for human consumption. This powder is safe for human consumption. So don't use this. When you dissolve this powder, it becomes blue. The solution becomes blue, but it is not a recommended uh, thing. You will need a jeweler's scale, which will be able to measure in grams and milligrams. Uh, it is available from any jewelry shop or you can get it from any uh, from from the Amazon. Now put a piece of paper and cancel the weight of this paper by tearing it or put a paper first and then switch on the scale so it will automatically tear the weight of the paper. And then you pour the powder from your bottle uh, 
uh, and uh, when it reaches one gram quantity, uh, this is the dose which you want. Uh, and one gram of methylene blue powder is to be added in one liter of mineral water. That will give you 1000 milligram in 1000 milliliter. That will be one milligram in one milliliter and that is 1%. I, I said you that just remember one milligram in one milliliter. So this is how I prepare the solution for my staff and my house and hospital staff and my friends would demand it from me. One gram of powder is added in Kinle or Bisleri one liter bottle. Just select a standard company's mineral water because you want a good quality of water and we want the accurate one liter quantity of water because uh, some cheap uh, company bottles may not have enough quantity of water. It may not be full one liter. Just shake it a little bit and your 0.1% solution is ready. You can take a spoon which is 4 ml or 5 ml which you have decided. Take it uh, into your mouth, keep it there for a minute and then you can gulp it. Uh, methylene blue is a pan micro seedal, so microbio seedal, so there's no need for any preservatives. It is redox, reduction and oxidation potential, so no need for buffer or pH compensating solution. It is a very stable salt, so there's no real expiry date. Uh, of course, there's a legal expiry date, which is five years, but it's a salt, so it's remain stable like sodium chloride. There's no need for cooling or refrigerator storage. At any temperature below 150 degrees centigrade, which never is going to be uh, achieved in the room temperature, methane will, will stay stable. And uh, if you are taking it for oral, I would suggest take it two times a day because after 12 to 14 hours, methane will start getting washed out. And if you want a complete round the clock protection, take it two times a day if your exposure level is high. And just imagine that you have eaten jambun for uh, uh, morning and evening and the tongue remains blue. If you don't like the bitterness of the taste, you can add the methylene blue to about 50 ml of lemon water or 100 ml of lemon water and uh, leave it for about two to three hours. And in two to three hours, it will become lighter, getting reduced to leucomethylene blue, a partial leucomethylene blue. The bitter with bitterness will be much uh, uh, reduced and then you can slowly uh, drink it sip by sip, not as a whole, but sip by sip so that there is some amount of sublingual absorption. And the nose knows it first. That is the English proverb. And uh, by oral consumption, we already covered the lower uh, oropharynx, but uh, we haven't fully covered the nasal mucosa. So Dr. Deepa Gulwalkar now recommends nasal drops uh, of two, two nasal, two drops in each nostril of the same solution, the 0.1%, and suck it. Suck it so that it goes as deep as uh, possible. So nasal drops and oral is the second option compared to the first and the best option is nebulization. And you can use these bottles for the nasal drops. Uh, you can use this kind of spoon and measuring the uh, pipette for, uh, for nasal drop as well as for quantification. She's uh, my better half, Dr. Ila. And uh, she has come out with an idea of impregnating uh, Sithoplady, the, the porous tablet, uh, 0.5 ml of injection. So it will contain five milligram. So this is very good and handy when you are traveling because to carry liquid in your baggage, handbag they don't allow in the flight. When you put it in the baggage, there's always a chance that a bottle might leak and your clothes will become dirty with uh, the blue stains. So she makes this for us whenever we travel. And uh, this is her another idea of using septiline, uh, which is uh, another immune booster aerobic tablet. You can impregnate septiline with 0.5 ml of methylene blue. You can use um, uh, insulin syringe for taking methylene blue 0.5 ml from the injection. There's uh, a little way, another way of converting methylene blue into leucomethylene blue for that small quantity if you want uh, it as a tablet to while traveling. Put it on LIMC. And in about 15 to 20 minutes, uh, methylene blue gets converted into leucomethylene blue. Allow it to dry and then you can take it with you while you are traveling. Uh, Exovita C is another tablet which we have tried and it also converts leucomethylene blue into leucomethylene blue. Zincoseed is another tablet which I tried. 
Now the question is, does it really work? It works because those we have about 1,000 friends and their families in our circle, whom we are following since last nine months. Those who are taking regular Michelin view, none of them have come positive. Some of the family members who were not taking Michelin view because of the fear of some kind of side effects and complications, they came positive. But those who were takers, they did not. We have given Michelin view to 400 medical representatives and we have followed them for all these nine months. They are traveling, they are sleeping in a different hotel every night. They are meeting 20, 30 doctors. They are waiting uh, for 15, 20 minutes before the turn comes to, uh, to go into the chamber. And they are amongst the patients. So they are probably the uh, lot who is highest exposed, more exposed than ourselves. And I know 400 MRs and their families, they have remained negative. And uh, 300 families having four positive members on 1500 prime contacts when they started taking they all remained negative so it definitely works and dr golwalkar as i said he himself is the example and his staff is an example that it works now uh, i also did some experimental work on behalf of all uh, we did rapid antigen test now if a test comes positive we made this patient to inhale the methylene blue nebulization two times or three times and, and and the next day we did the rapid antigen test because the viruses were oxidized the cell the, the membrane of the virus lipid membrane was oxidized the rapid antigen test became negative the second day which otherwise takes six to seven days so a patient is positive today is negative tomorrow after taking two or three nebulizations of methylene blue then we did another set of tests, uh, putting methylene blue spray in one nose, keeping the other nose as control. Uh, so right nostril of about 20 patients, we sprayed with methylene blue, keeping the other nostril untouched. And then to our surprise, the right swab came negative, the left swab came positive. So methylene blue distracts the virus in the mucosa and gives you a negative test. That is another proof that it kills. Now, third way of testing we did was we dipped the positive swabs, uh, positive person's uh, swabs into methylene blue, a test tube containing methylene blue and keeping it off um, about 40 minutes and then doing the test. And that gave negative. So the swab, two swabs from two nostrils, uh, one swab gives positive, which is not treated with methylene blue. The swab which is treated with methylene blue gives a negative test. So that again gives us a confirmation that it oxidizes the virus. Now, uh, uh, there are three, four more chapters, side effects, methylene blue therapy, methylene blue frequently asked questions. But I think before we go on to the side effects uh, and the other chapters, let me uh, stop here and we can have some panel discussion. Uh, uh, Right. Dr. Bharat Bhushan, welcome. Uh, unmute yourself. Dr. Uh, Ramesha, please unmute yourself. And uh, Dr. Alamdari, please unmute yourself. Or IT team, please unmute themselves. And uh, Dr. Ramesha, uh, uh, please take over the question and answer sessions. Dr. Alamdari, are you here? Dr. Golarkar, please unmute yourself. Dr. Alam Alamdari, please unmute yourself. Yeah, Dr. Shubharao, madam, please uh, uh, take over the session for uh, discussion. Uh, Dr. Alamdari, uh, by which name they are uh, introduced? Hello? Hello, Kakriya, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Sir, Dr. Alandari, uh, by which name uh, they are entered here? No, his name is not seen. His number is 5424059991. I can see him. He is here. Okay, 542, yes. Uh, 5424059991. His, his number is from Iran.
Hello, dear uh, brilliant uh, scientists. It's my honor to uh, join you, and it's a very, very pleasure for me that uh, I collaborate with you uh, with Dr. Bushan, that is a big scientist, and also all your big scientists in the India. It's my honor and pleasure. I want to go straight forward to the my experience about metal and blue and about uh, matter of uh, using the metal and blue. Let me okay. Uh, do you have my uh, a screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. We can see your screen. Okay. Yes. Okay. You see. Uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, the dear scientists uh, speak about the metal envelope and locability envelope, I will not speak too much about them, but just their uh, metal envelope are, uh, as you know, blue, and this is colorless. And uh, you see this getting electron, and uh, we, we uh, can't see your, like, we are seeing your WhatsApp. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but uh, uh, we can't see the presentation if you are sharing one. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, we are still looking at the WhatsApp uh, oh, somehow. Just one screenshot of WhatsApp, no problem. Yes. Do, you, do you see my screen? No. I mean, we see your screen, but what has happened is you are sharing your WhatsApp. You need to share your presentation. No. Uh, let me uh, stop sharing and maybe try sharing again. Okay. Do, do you have my screen? Uh, no, sir. Yeah, now yeah, we have now, the now we can see your yeah. picture. Yes. You, you can see now? Yes. Yes, yes we can now. Please, please, please go full screen. It's, uh, I go, uh, went to the full screen now. Right. Yes. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, because our friends uh, talk about the methylene blue and the local methylene blue and also uh, it's applied. I will not uh, talk too much about them. Just I will revise the uh, the mechanism, as you know, the uh, met hemoglobin, uh, uh, ferric uh, and ferrous, and uh, it's uh, used for converting uh, ferric to ferrous by met by methylene blue. As you see, there is a mechanism here that it is used for converting ferrous to ferric. And uh, methylene blue is, uh, this is the intervention of the methylene blue that as you see, NADPH, uh, it's uh, used by NADPH methemoglobin reductor and give the uh, unconverted uh, methylene blue to locomethylene blue. And locomethylene blue use this as a uh, converting fer fer uh, ferric to ferrous, then we should consider that methylene blue is oxidizing agent. If we will use for in our patients, we will use the oxidized form, but locomethylene blue is a reduced form of methylene blue, and there is no need to this is happened in our body. This is very important part in, we should consider, to take into consideration that locomethylene, if we will use at first locomethylene blue, we don't need to uh, reduce and 
it will directly do this as soon as possible when get into the blood stream. And uh, but if we will use the methylen blue, it should go this convert uh, thing and convert to locomethylen blue. And this means there is a impose of oxidative stress in our body if we will use methylen blue. I want to take your attention to this matter that, okay, it is good for uh, uh, people that the oxidative stress in those, there are, uh, there, there are not oxidative stress in them and uh, the antioxidant systems in those people are okay. But in patients that we have oxidative stress, if we use methylene blue, we impose the oxidative stress to our patient. And as uh, our friends doctor told about this, that oxidative stress has a mutual effect on inflammatory and inflammatory cause the oxidative stress, and both of them are booster of each other. It means that uh, this form of oxidized form is not is not good for those people that have oxidative stress in their body. This is very important point that we should take into consideration. Okay, our friends, I summarize the matter of uh, why we will use methylene blue. Uh, look, first of all, I should draw your attention when we will use the methylene blue uh, for those people that have no diseases, methylene blue orally consuming uh, goes to the gut and uh, penetrate to the cells and it will convert it to the leucomethylene blue and it has its effect from leucomethylene blue. Leucomethylene blue has antiviral activity Methylene blue, as methylene blue approved for FDA for treatment of net hemoglobin. I think we should take in your in our mind that actually methylene blue work in these diseases, met hemoglobinemia. And also methylene blue has a uh, inhibitory effect in nitrocosyl synthesis that is very, very bad for free patients. Locomethylene blue increase the slow NADPH methylene reductase pathway. That it means that decrease the hypoxemia through reducing methemoglobin. Important other activity of locomethylene blue, antimicrobial uh, anti chemotherapy. And other important is oxygen superoxide scavenger, as our friend talked about that, that deactivated the superoxide anion, that it's very harmful for the tissue, and in converted to the hydrogen peroxide, and then hydrogen peroxide converted to uh, uh, water and oxygen, that uh, this is, uh, is done by catalyst. Uh, Leucomethylene blue inhibits glycine oxidase. That it's very, very important enzyme to producing ROS, reactive oxygen species. Leucomethylene blue prevent plated activation and adhesion and aggregation. That it's very important for preventing embolism. Leucomethylene blue quench our, our uh, reactive uh, oxygen species by giving them electron and reducing. And leucomethylene blue can, as our friend told about this, decrease the inflammation. I uh, suggested this at the beginning. I suggested this as a therapy, uh, and uh, it was a suggested tropic protocol as I uh, published it in uh, one journal. Then I is, I give a proposal to our university and it is registered in the clinical trial of the USA. 
and uh, they give the permission for to me to use the methyl and blue vitamin C in a still system for treatment of critically ill COVID-19 patients. That was the phase uh, one clinical trial. Also, I did other parameters that it is very, very important in COVID-19 patients. And in those patients, I did uh, compare the uh, ICU patient, uh, patients and also uh, healthy individual. As you see, there is an increase, increase of the uh, NO2 and NO3 that this later in another research is done by other group mentioned that increasing the nitric oxide in the nitric oxide NO2 and NO3 can predict the mortality of patients if it is goes very high and the methyl and blue can prevent this formation of this by uh, preventing the NO centers in macrophage. As you see, I proved that methemoglobinemia increased in our COVID-19 patients by cancer, by comparing the healthy individual. And PAP assay that it is a marker of oxidative stress. And as you see, there is increased oxidative stress in COVID-19 patients. As you know, oxidants in patients cause the changing of the conformational of configuration of the proteins and promote them to, uh, to cascade of uh, clotting. And this is very important point we should take in consideration that this is pro-oxidant, antioxidant balance. Uh, this is the abbreviation of this, that it shows the oxidative stress in our patient. And COVID patients have a highly oxidative stress in them. And the, if we, we use just methyl and blue in those patients that they have defect in antioxidant systems, it caused the worse situation, more worse situation in them. But in patients that at the beginning of disease, if they have the antioxidant systems is okay, okay, methyl and blue can work. But in those patients have oxidative stress is caused much more oxidative stress. And also, uh, as you know, much oxidative stress, it causes much inflammatory and much more inflammatory cause much oxidative stress and they booster each others. And this is very, very uh, harmful for our patients if they have the antioxidants systems damaged. This is very important we should take into consideration why we should use the local methyl and blue for our patients. And uh, I did for four patients in phase one, as you see the nitric uh, NO2 and NO3 decreased and methemoglobin also decreased. Then I used local methyl and blue for treatments. And also I, uh, the oxidative stress, as you see, decreased in patients. In just four patients at the phase one that I did it. And other parameters also decreased as CRP and lactate dehydrogenase. The second uh, clinical trial, the phase two that I did and already the results are published in the reverse in this clinical. I want to draw your attention to this finding too. You see, it is very, very, um, I will show this, I think it's much 
Uh, as you see, the, uh, the SPU2, uh, this is the methylene blue group. Uh, okay, this is methylene blue group, and this is the control group, and uh, the patients that they got the standard care group. As you see, we have the, this is the SPU2 at the first, and then SPU2 after uh, three days, and SPU2 after five days. You can compare them with this. And uh, as you see, we have significant increase of the SPU2 in our patient in comparing the patients that they were in the standard care group. If we will use the metal, local methylene blue in our patients, in addition, we will prevent the oxidative stress in them and also preventing inflammation in them. We can, by converting the ferric or uh, ferric ion to ferrous, it means met met hemoglobin to hemoglobin, it means that we, uh, we increase the capability of binding oxygen to ferrous. And then we will have the increasing SPU2 in the third way in comparing to a standard care group, as you see. And also in the five days after using the local methylambulu, we also increasing the significant SpO2 oxygen pressure uh, ox uh, saturation ox uh, uh, saturation of oxygen in compare with this uh, control group as you see and this is very very important that uh, we should take into consideration and uh, by using local methylene blue, certainly we increase the SPU2 oxygen saturation in our patients uh, after seven days and five days in comparing with the standard care group. This is very important finding that we, uh, we found. And respiratory distress, as you know, most of the patients hospitalized because of uh, respiratory distress and, respi uh, and also decreasing their SPU2. This is the two parameter that patients are hospitalized. And uh, as you see, uh, we, we uh, measure the respiratory rate in our patient in, in methylene blue group. And it was very, very important finding by using local methylene blue, the respiratory distress was as measured by respiratory rate, respiratory rate decreased significantly at the third day and at the five days. And you see there is a mm, decrease, but not significant in the control group. This is also very, very important finding. And comparing these two groups, as you see, we have the significant, uh, uh, significant improvement in respiratory distress in or patient when we give lucomethylene blue in those patients. Of course, it is very, very obvious why we will have this uh, phenomena, why we will face this matter, improvement of the uh, respiratory distress. Okay, because just lucomethylene blue can convert the ferric ion to ferrous and increase the capability of the 
refer uh, hemoglobin to bonding to the oxygen and transporting. And it caused solving the problem of respiratory distress in our patient. As you need, as you saw, the hospital stay uh, decreased significantly in, in our uh, leukomethylen blue group in comparing with the control group. And really, it is very, very interesting the hospital stay decreased. And it is very, very important as soon as we empathy or a hospital can be replaced with the new patient. As you see, we, we found this. And mortality decreased 10%, above 10%. It was not significant. But as you know, 10% decreasing mortality are very, very important. And maybe we, we should consider also other pathological process in COVID-19 patients. And it is very my pleasure to inform you that I found two other pathological process in COVID-19 patients that it is very, very important to care these patients and I will publish this result as soon as possible. But this, uh, you know, by um, considering these two other pathological process, I decrease the mortality much more less than this 10%. And it is about for it comes to 4%. This is very important. Uh, other, the, in the clinical trial phase three, that I did it, and it is published in, uh, as you see, also the pathological, uh, uh, the hospital stay decreased significantly. It is very important that in the little and blue in leukomethylene blue group, we have significantly decreased. And we have also significantly, not significantly, but about uh, marginal significant decrease of uh, mortality. This is very, very important point that we should take into consideration. And uh, uh, it, as I uh, mentioned, that I found two other important mechanisms to uh, can be considered in order to decrease the mortality as, as soon as possible recovery. And already this becomes significant. Uh, about two months, I found these two other mechanisms and I, I am about to publish this result as soon as possible. I want to show the result of our patients. You see, the SPU2 is about 81. And uh, when I give the uh, uh, methylene, uh, locomethylene blue, it goes to 9030. You see, it goes to 9030. And uh, this patient, after five days, it, uh, as you saw, it, it was in the NIV non invasive ventilation. Uh, and after five days of the uh, con uh, administration of locomethylene blue, it totally uh, uh, recovered and uh, it, uh, uh, it's a simple mask and with 90, uh, uh, 93 SpO2 oxygen. Uh, also, I want to show uh, other patients that it's very important. Dr. Alamgari, can you make it a little faster? Because Dr. Alamgari, yes, yes. can you speed up a little bit more? Okay. Do you, do you see my uh, screen? I can, we can see the previous screen, not the next one. Then uh, uh, The first patient we are seeing, we are not seeing the second patient slides. 
You cannot see the your slides are over. You don't have any extra slides below 20. Let me. We can't see any slides below 20 number. Uh, let me, I will. Let me, I. Okay, okay, I will. Uh, just a minute, please. I think your computer is hanged. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, you're right. Still hanged, unfortunately. Uh, I, see. Uh, I think we can. Uh, the uh, by the time he, uh, Dr. Alandari fixes his computer, let us take Dr. Golalkar's uh, opinion about, I mean, let us take the questions related to Dr. Golalkar. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Do you see my uh, screen or not? Yes, we can see the screen, but the screen okay. is hanged. You can't move that screen. Uh, uh, do, do you see the patients now? Yeah, we can see the patient which you already shown us. Okay, okay. You see, this patient is NIV. SP2 is 82, as I, uh, let me, I, okay, A, let me see, uh, 82, SP2 is 82, as you see, that, okay? You can't see no. that screen. Dr. Alamdari, you please uh, stop your screen and then you have to restart it. I think there is some, some problem. It is hanged. We are seeing only the first patient. So what you do is you close the things, restart it, bring the, Second patients and come back again. Okay, okay. I will uh, close. Okay. We take questions for Dr. Golwankar, please. Dr. Golwankar, can you uh, give your experience and uh, your views about the methylene blue use you have done for so many years? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> First thing, uh, I would like to say something about the questions being raised about the methylene blue, whether it works or not. The first thing I would like to say that the x-rays which Dr. Kakri has shown, the in tuberculosis, this is one of the sample. I got thousands of, I treated thousands of patients giving total res uh, resolution with no evidence of whether even in fibrocasias with cavitary lesions, put them positive patient at the end of the day, there is no residuals. How do you explain? How can you say that it doesn't work? In uh, COVID, I feel sorry those patients who have been referred for lung transplant. If you start using it immediately till the patient recovers, I'm sure not a single patient will require lung transplant. I feel sorry for the patient. Today, there was an appeal in the uh, mobile that someone in Ahmedabad is uh, required, uh, advised to go to Chennai for uh, lung transplant. I felt sorry for the patient that these patients, if you treat them with inhalation of methylene blue, I'm using methylene blue because the uh, leukomethylene blue is not available. So I got experience of methylene blue. So these patients, if you start treating them at the beginning of the uh, therapy, they will not need any lung transplant. I have got, uh, I've prepared a paper of post COVID fibrosis, totally recovered send it for publication, but uh, even 45 patients uh, paper with extensive primary and secondary MDR-TB. Two of them had XDR-TB, totally recovered. I had sent for publication, unfortunately, I failed in uh, getting acceptance. But uh, now with this background, how can anybody say that it doesn't have any role in it? Now, as I always say, for the because this is a conference for the general practitioner, few tips I would like to give clinical, how to assess, how to examine, how to go ahead. You are in OPD. If you get a patient with dry coughing, I got few tips for the general practitioner. If you get a dry coughing, Dr. Kakri has shown the photograph of a patient. If the luster is blown, if you train your eyes, the bright shining of the skin goes away. Third thing, 
oxygen level low but no dyspnea it is corona if you have doubt about any corona ask the patient to walk for 20 meters check first oxygen if it is 96 97 ask the patient to walk for 20 meters come uh, let him come back and put the pulse oximeter on the finger wait for 30 seconds immediately you will get 96% oxygen saturation but after 12 to 14 seconds it start falling it there is a diffusion uh, problem and then it falls and to how much time it takes to come back to normal that gives you an idea clinical idea assessment at what to what extent the severity of the disease is radiologically everybody we don't ask for a ct scan those who come to the ct scan okay but if you get floppy shadow with another finding i have shown in other photographs the peripheral bronchi are not normally visible in a good x ray you have to search for them when we, when we were students we were asked to count the number of bronchi on right side 13 on left side nine bronchi are visible if any number is missing we we were asked to search for the where is the where is the problem with that bronchi that the, there are the major bronchi but in peripheral bronchi are not routinely visible but in corona because of the clogging of the fluids they are uh, markedly visible even uh, silver lining shadow is a uh, 100% proof that patient has got corona so silent chest so another thing you if you get a silent chest in corona the leukotrienes have been absorbing absorbed being utilized there is no evidence of any spasm if you get ronchi be sure the chance of corona is minimal there are few ronchi occasionally audible but if you get a spasm if you get a uh, ronchi crepitation the chance of corona is very minimal so these are the clinical tips for the general practitioner patient coming to you with this uh, and fourth thing now a day because of the virulence in last year in first viral episode half uh, 2.5 ml was enough but dr kagre has rightly said this uh, virulent basic uh, virus the second phase is very vi- highly virulent i advocate 2.5 but he has rightly prescribed it i will have to increase the dose and at the bed time if you have a uh, nebulizer ideally it is should more much better but if you don't have a nebulizer two drops in the nose are advisable third thing if you have, you have anybody in this viral episode if you have any member of your family is proved corona positive treat all the members immediately don't wait for the rt pcr to become positive and treat them don't wait for it treat everybody member of your family because i always ask the patient that if you are today positive you have brought your brother for the treatment tomorrow you will have to come so treat them immediately now regarding the methylene blue prophylaxis is the key word to prevent and control the uh, corona in india in our luckily in our state number of societies uh, social organizations have come up they have started offering to their like a uh, some important person in a village has started offering in his village methylene blue the number of cases have started dropping in surat in large scale one diamond Uh, businessman had started offering the cases have started coming down that prophylaxis is the very important and is the key factor as early as possible start for the prophylaxis in case if a patient comes to you sublingual and nebulized form nebulized form is very important to prevent the cytokine st- storm to prevent the spread of the disease if the cytokine storm is formed if the fluid comes it is like a febicol i wait for the sp- patient to cough out sputum it is white i only i got tested in four patient it is purely protein with few eosinophils no secretory no inflammatory cells were present you have to break if you want to bring out the patient of the uh, trauma you have to break the the sticky sputum sticky protein for that methylene blue will help you is helping me second thing to prevent it dexamethasone is helpful third thing 3% hypotonic saline repeated use 
till the patient it takes 48 hours if a patient comes to me with 80 percent i give them nebulization with methylene blue and oxygen uh, i give him oxygen bring it to 85 i ask the patient to go with a uh, oxygen cylinder because 85 is a danger line 95 to 90 okay you can take some chances at home only 90 to 85 is the danger line 85 below 85 you have to hospitalize but if patient comes to 85 with oxygen cylinder with this nebulization therapy sublingual i ask the patient in case if it gets down take oxygen all the patient give one version that after 48 hours they recovered started recovering fully and wow. they are normal so this methylene blue iv is required ideally wow. advised on the third day not on the 10th day patient comes to me on they ask give me a call that patient is very serious not responding on 10 day when the lungs are totally flooded with the uh, secretions, not able to exchange the gases and that condition with IV will re uh, relieve him of the hypoxia temporarily, but till the lungs are not in a position to supply oxygen, it will go back to bad shape. So start early, that is the better, third is the most ideal way, that will I will advise. So first, again, I will repeat again, sublingual prophylaxis is the most important thing. Start in mass as early as possible. That will bring down the level. In some of the village, I threatened the uh, leaders of that village. That now I'm not going to treat any patient from your village. I am ready to offer you as many bottles as you want. And the, since 15 days, there is not a single patient from those villages. Surat, the rate, death rate has come down, incidence rate has come down. Bhavnagar, now people are getting ready. Now rate has started coming down. So prophylaxis is the key word. One should profile use. Inhalation, if you have to a patient, inhalation, first thing you must give with sublingual. And if patient is admitted, then methylene view additional will give a big. Sir, in case of post-COVID, you advise uh, methylene blue in, uh, nebulizer for a longer period of time to avoid uh, to recover from the fibrosis and uh, whatever the consolidation has taken place. What is the cutoff point from where they can stop this methylene blue uh, nebulizer? See, routinely, I have my experience, it starts working in early stages, they don't develop fibrosis. See, that uh, fluffy executive shadow are very important. If it is early, within 15 days, patients are recovering totally. 1.5 months, one and a half months is the time usually I need it because patient is coming to me regularly. I go on monitoring and I know that now the patient has recovered. Cut off point is if a patient comes with 96% oxygen, I ask to walk for a 20 meters or more if we can. If he goes up to 97, that means the most of the lungs have been cleared. Still, I will ask him to continue because some bronchioles are may, get, may be blocked inside because the CT scan takes some longer time to give total clearance. So I ask advice to continue for two and a half months. And in extensive, it takes two and a half months to get clear. But none of them, if you continue with that methylene blue inhalation, fibrosis do not develop, they recover fully. And... Uh, uh, they don't need any transport or anything. And no. secondly, one thing I have added with nebulization uh, in oxygenation that uh, you must have seen the humidifying chamber. When patient comes in a bad shape, I give him oxygen with methylene blue. It goes inside the lung, start working. And when you take methylene blue in nebulization, not a single patient has developed mycormycosis who is on my treatment. Sir, the uh, is there any cutoff point on CT scan? Because so many times the patient is comfortable, the oxygen level is maintained, he can climb three, four floors without any problem, but the CT scan is not showing complete resolution. Should they continue with this? Yes, yes. Is That's two why I said months? that two, uh, two and a half months is required. And uh, six minute watch test, you can do it. But some of the regions which are available, which are present on the CT scan, they take three months to clear. Okay. It Thank takes you. longer time. But then the natural process resolution starts. Okay. But the crisis is over. Okay.
Dr. Alamdar, could you reboot your screen for the second patient to be shown? Yes, yes, I will. Uh, uh, I hope. Uh, no, sir, again, your WhatsApp screen has. Uh, you, you, yeah. you yeah, now it is. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you see 82. Okay, we, we did many patients this. Okay. And now look at this 95. Most it is very, uh, very, very interesting. After one and a half hour, when I will give methyl and blue, it will increase to 95. After and then a little decrease. After this, it goes to 90. You see, this patient 95 exactly this 94. Uh -huh. Or after the uh, five, six days using the locomethyl and blue, it converted completely to a simple mask. And I did for many patients. And also I did the rescue therapy for patients. Uh, the, about 46 patients that they did not answer to remdesivir, very probably the interferon, but in the last option of treatment, I gave them locomethyl and blue, and it's uh, 40 patients rescued, and uh, it they will completely become uh, completely well. And uh, I have all these documents, and I uh, uh, and uh, also Dr. Bushan knows uh, the paper that we write it, we submit it somewhere to. Accept it. Uh, the most important po point: if there is a pharmaceutical company in India that they wants to give this formulation of preparation of locomethyl and blue, along with other components that already I reached to them that it should be necessary for treatment of patients, I will give them these formulations to this pharmaceutical company to use for their patients. And uh, if uh, you can help to find a pharmaceutical company to give this them, uh, it will be very, very useful for the patients because it can be give them orally without any uh, difficulty and consideration, but uh, we need just a pharmaceutical company in India to I will give this my I give I will give my formulation to them, uh, and uh, as uh, all of the uh, uh, blue gear scientists, you know the methyl and blue really works very well, and uh, just we should uh, do more exp more patients to convince all the world that really the right pharmaceutical intervention for treatment of the patients are methyl and blue, locomethyl and blue for, for, and really we can save many patients. Please, if you can help me to find a pharmaceutical company, uh, I will give uh, them uh, my formulation. It is not very difficult to prepare. Dr. Alan Gary, your tablet, which is available in Iran, Suppose it is exposed to sunlight or exposed to atmosphere and oxygen, does it get back into the yellow form, uh, the blue form, or it remains leucomethylene blue only? No, no. You know, I will add other excipients uh, that it will uh, uh, convert the methylene blue to leucomethylene blue. And uh, it will keep this uh, leucomethylene blue as locomethyl and blue during the uh, drinking this uh, uh, this syrup. It is, I prepared in two form, as I understand, uh, I should prepare in two form, in syrup and also in the powder, like a sachet, both of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, methyl and blue uh, converted to locomethyl and blue and completely stable 
in that uh, situation and uh, the patients uh, will give the local I am agree with uh, Dr. Deepak Gul Walker that uh, methylene blue are very good uh, uh, also in form of uh, uh, oxidized, but in those patients that they have in those people that the antioxidant systems of their body are working properly and strong. But, uh, and in those patients really will good, uh, will give answer. But uh, for preventing any uh, worry about the oxidized effect of the uh, methylene blue, we should convert this to the stabilized locomethylene blue and give them this in the form of the syrup and powder I, I already I gave them. You know, it is huge amount of that already I prepare uh, and uh, it will uh, use just one day and it will finish. And I think because the India producer of the methylene blue, I will buy the methylene blue from India, a pharmaceutical company in India and I will convert it to methylene blue and give them to them. If a pharmaceutical company want to give this formulation to them, I am uh, already re ready to give this formulation to them. Okay. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Alamgari, uh, Dr. Kakare, can I share my experience today? Yes, Dr. Alamir, can you please stop sharing your screen so that we can see each other? Uh, I will, uh, uh, I will, okay, okay. Right, okay. So, uh, Dr. Alamir, after we learned from you about leukomethylene blue, which really opened our eyes, and uh, mm -hmm. then in the last whole week, uh, uh, since it was not possible for us to get it from Iran to, to Bhavnagar, in that one week, and there were several patients. So myself and Dr. Ramesh Shah, we both were trying to reduce methylene blue to leukomethylene blue, and uh, we did a, a series of experimentation with help from uh, a very notable and very high level uh, team of scientists. Uh, in Bhavnagar, there is one very big institute, which is known as uh, Central Salt and Marine Chemical Research Institute. So I took help from uh, they have about 250 P chemist chemistry PhDs working there. So I took some help from them. And me and uh, Dr. Ramesh, we made uh, leukomethylene blue at home. Uh, not may, Maybe not as good as uh, your formulation, but we it was some kind of a working kind of solution. And Dr. Ramesh Shah has treated one uh, very, very seriously ill uh, patient today. And uh, I request Dr. Ramesh, uh, you please share your experience of today. See, what has happened, it was a 60 years uh, Sadhviji. That means uh, Dr. Alangari, she is a religious leader. And she and was... She's, uh, having... she's, a, she's a high level nun. Nun. So I was called to give my opinion and uh, treat them. Then I, I gave them the solution of leukomethylene blue. So I prepared about 100 ml of methylene blue with 50 milligram of methylene blue dissolved in it. And I have put about 150, uh, about nearly two grams of vitamin C in tablet form. And I allowed that thing to remain in the uh, outside for about six hours. And to my surprise, 50 to 60 percent of the color has disappeared. So it was somewhat semi uh, leukomethylene. And I gave her slowly by Ryle's tube over a period of 30 minutes, 20 20 cc's. And in 45 minutes, I waited there. And after 45 minutes, the oxygen level has started rising. Her oxygen requirement, which was about 25 to 30 liters, has reduced to 10 to 15 liters. And the oxygen level has remained in 94, nearby 94, 95. And her efforts to breathe has been reduced. The stress, the respiratory stress was so less that she was comfortably lying. And she was in semi-unconscious state, has become conscious. She started recognizing the people after 45 minutes. She was talking to some extent, 
she was answering she was blessing the people who were standing there she has given me the blessing also so this is my first experience probably dr gagare this is the first experience in our country yes yes <laughs> yes i say i i fully agree with you this was the first experience and uh, today is a shubh day of ganesh chaturthi and uh, the leukomethylene blue in india uh, you are the pioneer of starting no, no, i am not the pioneer it is you no, no, for everything. india you are the pioneer for world it is dr alamdari who is pioneer of concept oh, yeah, yeah, of, of leukomethylene blue but he dr alamdari you infused the concept of leukomethylene blue which was never there in our minds in the last webinar and we started working and uh, it is so good that the first experiment was on a very high order uh, religious uh, nun and uh, she was it, almost it, it, about to die she was to be intubated but uh, they it, refused it, it, they refused for intubation i mean uh, her uh, higher uh, uh, clergy uh, the, the the topmost boss of that religion they decided that, that if she has to die she has to die in the temple not in the icu said so she took a discharge against medical advice and brought her to the temple and she was just waiting to die in that temple and at 2 o'clock uh, we started preparing leukomethylene blue at uh, 8:30 in the morning and by 1 o'clock uh, it was ready and uh, at about 2 o'clock ramesh at what was it at 3 o'clock we started with uh, 100 ml of 50 mg of uh, methylene uh, leukomethylene and she has been administered second dose just now it is going on very nice in the same amount yes you know uh, the, i want to also draw your attention to consider as you told respiratory distress it is very amazing that respiratory distress after one or two hours after drinking leukomethylene blue decrease very uh, uh, decrease and uh, very much and the patients release from very hard breathing i saw by myself in many patients she is uh, at present sleeping very peacefully Yes, she does not have any uh, respiratory distress. She is not gasping for any oxygen. She is yes. maintaining very well. And yes. when I was coming out, the religious leader were talking amongst themselves that they had about six to seven patients of that nuns category lying in the hospital. They are planning to get discharged and bring them back into the med temple. Yes. So that is what they are planning now. I said, don't be in hurry. Wait for one or two days. Let's see the results for three days. and then you decide let the patient remain as it is because i am not a pulmonologist so i may not be able to help you about the rest of the things you have to take the help of the pulmonologist because i am an eye surgeon i just this was a last resort that we thought that there is nothing harm in doing it so we did it and we succeeded in doing this very nice uh, yes uh, uh, go ahead uh, go ahead please Uh, yeah Do dr alam uh, dr alam dari uh, we would like to share my i mean on behalf of ramesh and myself i would like to share with you how we made leukomethylene blue for this nun and uh, maybe we would like to have your inputs after you see that small uh, ppt so uh, if ramesh uh, uh, you and dr alam dari allow me to share that uh, yeah, small yeah please 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 uh, please so that because this will be very uh, useful for all the others uh, who are watching so let me share the screen how we prepared leukomethylene blue for this lady nun so this uh, uh, preparation of leukomethylene blue uh, i am presenting on behalf of dr Uh, Darayush uh, Hamidi Alamdari from Mashhad University, Iran. Dr. Deepak Golwalkar, Bhavnagar. Dr. Ramesh Shah. And uh, uh, we already have learned about Dr. Alamdari. Now, here I would like to bring to your notice the difference between hypoxemia versus hypoxia. In a normal uh, respiration condition, the oxygen we are pushing into the lungs. and the lungs are transferring this oxygen to the blood in the form of oxyhemoglobin now oxyhemoglobin goes to the peripheral tissue 
and supplies oxygen uh, to the entire body's uh, each and every cell. And the returning blood is known as deoxyhemoglobin, uh, blood which gets converted into oxyhemoglobin again and that circulation keeps on going. Now, what happens in COVID is that a significant portion of oxyhemoglobin gets converted into methemoglobin. And once it goes into the methemoglobin, there is no rescue. The methemoglobin does not come back to oxyhemoglobin unless we intervene either or it takes about four months time when all the red blood cells would be dead and the new red blood cells will come. That takes 120 days, about four months time for the nature to take to do that. But by, the, by that time, we'll be losing the patient. So what happens here is that although you are pushing, uh, let us say 100% FiO2 oxygen, you are pushing 12 liters of oxygen, but the blood is not transporting this oxygen. So lungs may be cleared. The lungs have, lungs have started functioning fairly well, but the blood is not functioning. So the transport mechanism is not there, although the supply of oxygen is available. So as a result of this methemoglobinemia, the patient is still hypoxic in spite of pumping oxygen into the lungs. And this is known as functional anemia. If you measure this patient's hemoglobin on a hemoglobinometer, it will show you 14 milligrams hemoglobin. But the effective hemoglobin, which is transferring, will be only the amount of oxyhemoglobin, which will be only 5 grams or 6 grams. So this patient is in a condition of severe functional anemia so their partial oxygen pressure in the blood may be 90 millimeters of mercury, which is nearly normal. 90 to 100 is normal. So at this 90 millimeters of mercury peripheral arterial oxygen, partial uh, oxygen pressure in the blood, the patient's SpO2 should be 99. Whereas the patient's SpO2 is 70 or 65 because 30, 40, 50 percent of the blood is methemoglobinated. This is not transferring the hemoglobin. And it is the leukomethylene blue here which is coming to the rescue. The leukomethylene blue will convert the ferric ion of uh, methemoglobin into ferrous ion and the ferrous ion is oxyhemoglobin. So the dysfunctional methemoglobin portion of the blood which is 30-40%, sometimes 60% comes back into functional and that is how the, the functional anemia gets completely reversed within 30 to 40 minutes. So, uh, uh, so there's only, there are only two options. Either you give the Paxil volume, two, three blood, you, you have to remove two to three uh, liters of the blood of this patient and give, it, give three liters of new blood to this patient. Either that or you convert methemoglobin back into uh, oxyhemoglobin using leukomethylene blue. This is what we learned from Dr. Alamdari and it works. And because we are giving leukomethylene blue, we are avoiding the oxidative stress uh, on the patient's uh, derailed uh, oxidative system. If we give methyl um, oxidized methylene blue, there will be severe oxidative stress to convert it into leukomethylene blue and then convert, then act it. So it's it's so much of an eye opening, Doctor Alamdari. We will be forever indebted to you. The world will remain thankful to you for clearing mm -hmm. this concept in the minds of all of us about leukomethylene blue. Now our experiment. We learned from the scientists of uh, this uh, Central Salt Research Institute that lactic acid reduces methylene blue to leukomethylene blue. So my sister did this experiment. She took the buttermilk from home, 200 to 250 ml homemade thick buttermilk in a bottle or in a thermos flask, and we added 10 ml, 100 milligram of intravenous methylene blue injection to it. Fill it almost to the full. There should be no, no air on the top or very minimal air on the top because we don't want that oxygen to, to hamper this reaction. Close the lid tight and leave it at room temperature in a dark corner in cupboard. No direct sunlight, uh, but at room temperature. You don't need to keep it in a refrigerator. And after three hours, all methylene blue will turn into leukomethylene blue. And this is how it happens. You know, this blue buttermilk uh, gets converted into completely white buttermilk. And I drank it 
and the buttermilk taste as is there is no alteration of the taste or the flavor uh, the the sour taste of the buttermilk uh, uh, you know the sourness decreases but the flavor and the taste remains almost as is and the bitterness of the methylene blue is completely gone i i drank it myself and i realized that oxymethylene blue uh, the blue methylene blue is very bitter whereas lupomethylene blue is almost there is no taste uh, it is colorless as well as the tasteless and then we did another experiment we pour, i mean we just wanted to make sure that methylene blue has not completely decomposed it is still there so we poured this buttermilk into a dish and allow it uh, to take oxygen from the air and uh, to our surprise within 10 minutes it became blue again so that means the lupomethylene blue is there methylene blue is there it just needs oxygen to come back to the oxidized blue form and here you can notice on uh, this that the supernatant air of the half uh, bottle half is poured in this into this dish half of this air has started working and the 20% oxygen present in this air has converted some amount of buttermilk back into oxidized uh, methylene blue so that means there is methylene blue Uh, although we cannot see it so that was the buttermilk uh, experiment and then the second experiment for this nun what we did was we took a dextrose uh, 5% uh, 100 ml pint and added ascorbic acid two injections 1.55 gram that is 3000 mg of ascorbic acid and one full ampule of methylene blue uh, into it and kept at room temperature around 30 degrees for 4 to 5 hours in a dark uh, corner and to our surprise it got converted into lupomethylene blue in 4 to 5 hours the bitterness was gone sourness of the vitamin c is also gone a uh, very mild tamarind like uh, very mild sour taste uh, was there it stays as is even after exposure to air for about 20 to 30 minutes uh, in open glass and when i bubbled pure medical oxygen through it it became oxidized back to methylene blue and after 2 hours again it became lupomethylene blue so uh, we uh, uh, then we ran off uh, you know we, did, we didn't get on we get only two uh, ascorbic acid injections so we didn't have more ascorbic acid injection so we got the powder of ascorbic acid the pure form of vitamin uh, c in the powder form and we added 3 grams of this powder uh, into 100 ml of uh, d5 added one ampule and 3 mg i mean 3 grams of uh, vitamin c powder and it gave the same result it, it reduced uh, to lupomethylene blue so and uh, even with lemon juice it was possible but uh, with lemon juice we needed much more amount of lemon because lemons have only 80 mg of vitamin c we need 3000 mg of vitamin c so about 3 and a half kg lemons has to be squeezed and that much juice will be needed so this is practically uh, not possible but uh, doing it with ascorbic acid with uh, probably adding acetyl cysteine injection uh, and uh, uh, in d5 adding uh, one ampule of uh, methylene blue it works and uh, it gave us a very good result in in the first patient Dr. Ramesh Shah has treated in Mumbai the, the the high order nun. So thank you very much, Dr. Narayan uh, Alamdari again no, for, no, no, no. for this great no, no, no. Uh, eye opener uh, tips in the last webinar. I will stop thank here. You. Thank you. You are welcome. Just uh, I want to draw your attention that uh, this COVID nineteen has uh, several mechanisms to Uh, cause the death of the patients with several mechanisms, right. and I think it is. Uh, I found to other uh, also mechanisms that it is very important to treatment. You know, uh, I went and give them to some ICU patients also lucomethylene blue, but really they. after giving the lucomethylene blue it increased the sp2 the 
for example, for, from 10 patients that I give, about nine patients, we have the increase of SPO2 in, the, in these patients. But uh, from these nine patients, about four or five patients are rescued and uh, cured completely with local little and blue. But about five mm -hmm. other person, patients die. And I was always asked why we gave these patients locomotile and blue. We did not increase the oxidative stress. And uh, we did it according exactly to mechanisms that we are now. But why these ICU patients die? Always I ask. I really work hard to find the problem. And fortunately, fortunately, I found it. And uh, the, the just please, if uh, there is a pharmaceutical company that I will give my formulation to them, they, that other possible mechan the other mechanism also can be sold. And when this uh, mechanism sold, as you saw that, that ICU patients, it completely uh, recovered from the disease. And uh, you know, the, the patients with the lymphocyte, as you saw in the patients, is about two or three, the lymphocyte, the percentage of the lymphocyte, two or three. These patients are about two or three, and we should consider other also mechanisms that rescue the patients. I am already working for one uh, more than one year in these patients, and I found uh, the other mechanism too. Uh, and we should uh, give, uh, we should consider also other mechanisms too. This is very important. Just the pharmaceutical company, if you help to find and uh, uh, give this formulation to them that along with local and blue, we should give other uh, necessary components. We will okay. rescue many, many patients. Right. Dr. Alangari, before we decide to ask any company to make the methylene blue, leukomethylene blue in India, can we purchase a few kgs from uh, Iran? And can you help us to purchase a few kgs from Iran, leukomethylene? I try to send you, uh, send you, you know, uh, the post office uh, asked me MSDS, MSDS. Uh, MSDS means uh, material safety data sheet. I am about to prepare this, but if the company we find, uh, if we will find a company in India, it, uh, we will reach to point as soon as possible. You know, because the metal and blue that I am using are produced in India and other components that I am using also in India. And I think uh, uh, if we will hurry to find a company, it is much more sooner we reach, reach uh, because you know, if I will explain the mechanism that uh, in this disease are completely I found this mechanism in these patients. Uh, it can be completely, uh, uh, it is, uh, you can rescue many patients more than just locomotive. Okay. Dr. Golwankar, can we think about uh, using this leukomethyl blue trial for nebulization? Yes, yes, most welcome. If it is available, I will be happy to use it, right? Sir, I will I will make uh, several liters for you and make it available for you. <laughs> okay. I, I now know at least two, not the other XP excipients I know, but at least I know the conversion of uh, methylene blue into leukomethylene blue. So, uh, with the guidance from Dr. Alamdari, we'll start a, um, a personal kind of a randomized uh, trial at your uh, clinic. Second or, thing is Dr. Kakaria. Can we use the same IV uh, 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 leukomethylene blue prepared in glucose solution with vitamin C for a better results intravenous? 
Oh yes, no, no. According to Dr. Alam Alam Nari, there is no need for this because leukomethylin blue is hundred percent absorbed from gastric mucosa in twenty minutes. So when a drug is absorbable from gastric mucosa one hundred percent, what is the point in giving intravenous? So in his first clinical trial, they were using intravenous, but after that they dropped. And uh, I fully agree with Dr. Alam Dari that there's no point giving intravenous. There's no need. You once you have leukomethylene blue, you just give it per oral through rice tube if the patient is on ventilator. That is what we did with this patient. We gave okay. it through rice tube. Right. And in fact, there are three more patients with 92 and 85 oxygenation. Three of them also we have given one bottle to each of them. I will be supplying the bottles tomorrow for the next five days in the leukomethylene blue. Right. Very good. I am ready. Any collaboration with uh, uh, have, uh, any person in India wants to have this formulation, I will give to him. That's okay. my honor. No, me and Dr. Ramesha, we are the first persons to have it from you. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Golwal. <laughs> I have already I have already started somebody who might approach you for importing so small amount or large amount from your country back to India. They are already started the process of importing it. Doctor Alamdari, is it possible? I am going to USA on uh, next Saturday for about uh, 20 25 days. Uh, my daughter is uh, uh, MD physician over there. She is in charge of a COVID ICU. And uh, I hold a U.S. green card, so I have to go every six months. So that is my compulsion. So I'm going uh, to USA. So is it possible if you cannot ship to India, if you can ship it a small amount to us to USA, I can bring it back with me. I don't think it is possible. It's uh, not uh, to. Uh, to uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Bhushan, please. Yeah, it is uh, not possible uh, uh, because I tried uh, to do the same uh, at my institute, okay. uh, but there are some you know uh, legalities and all those things. So it is better not to. Uh, when we can do this thing in India, uh, it's better. You know, okay. once okay. the once the treatment become established and guidelines, uh, uh, I would like to just emphasize here. See, methylene blues is in this world for the last several years, and it is a uh, it is it's, it's having a very good safety profile. It is having an indication where it is used commercially uh, uh, to, to methemoglobinemia to throughout the world. Now in this COVID, which is a new disease, uh, we are using a, a repurposed drugs. Like example, remdesivir. It was used for some other purpose. Now it has been used to, to treat the COVID. So uh, we can use methylene blue uh, uh, in the COVID treatment. Uh, the best thing in the, when the pandemic is going on, we have to see how we can use methylene blue when the patient is having a very less oxidative stress. And that is the prevention. So if we use methylene blue in a nebulization for prevention, we will not lend up our patients to lead to the situation where they can have double the hypoxia. So that prevention is very, very important. When the, uh, you know, our whole country is struggling uh, with the, you know, uh, to provide the resources for to the 140 uh, you know crores of people it is better to use those strategies and those resources which are easily available and somebody like dr golwalkar dr ramesh dr Kikardia, who are having so much of experience in using this it is better for us to use those things in our clinical practice and once you find the results publish this once you will publish then other people will also starting experimenting it so publication is very very important so just, just try your, uh, just try your, uh, with your patient, you get a, 10 patients, 50 patients, whatever number of patients you get, just publish it. And it's very, very simple. If you need any help in publication, approach us. I mean, no, we, we, have a, we, we have a very nice people who can help us in India. Extremely exactly. experienced people for publication. There's no problem for it. Exactly. You, what you're saying is absolutely right. We have to publish it and not keep it with us only. Exactly. Exactly. Then exactly. we get the recognition and more people will be benefiting. What you are saying uh, is... Uh, no, no, Dr. Bhushan, the problem we faced with Dr. Golwalkar was that wherever uh, Dr. Golwalkar sent his data and his uh, papers uh, of so many patients, everywhere they asked for the ethics committee approval. 
exactly so and uh, the ethics committee uh, approval to get that in bhavnagar is so difficult i mean it's almost impossible no but that is there in all all part of our country so yeah that okay, can i uh, can i continue yeah. uh, here just yes, yes, for yes, more yes, minutes yes, so uh i was talking to one of the organization which is a ngo kind of thing i mean not truly ngo but they were saying that if somebody is uh, doing a study and in your own clinic you can have a one person or two person ethics committee so they can approve your uh, work and you because you are uh, having all the data of the patient you can just uh, uh, take the help of those ngos and the people who are in the literature world you can take the help of those people to publish your data and once the data will get published other people will start following it and then it becomes uh, uh, you know kind of more scientific now coming to the prevention and the treatment and the treatment when the oxidative stress is too much and you may not find the very good results you know as dr alamdari and you were working and dr alamdari rightly did and he 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 worked very hard to figure out what what is the pathology and how the mechanism is working and the leucomethylin blue i learned from him so it is just a matter of learning keep our, keeping our mind and heart open to learn new things and that's how we we you know we progress so iv methylene blue or which is used in the, during the hospitalization when the patient is having a oxidative stress if you start early you will find the good results but if you delay when the oxidative stress is getting too much and there is a multiple organ damage then you may not find the good results so start early as possible as you'd good the third thing which is the most important thing and which will be the uh, you know game changer is the post covid fibrosis the people who are coming out of the icu or those who are having the infection when they go home they still are on the uh, are on the oxygen yes. so the so my problem uh, my um, i mean interest in uh, in methylene blue started i will share my story uh in last year when i was treating my covid patients in spite of giving all the treatments which was available at the time in the month of uh, october, september october november last year my patient was still having a hypoxia they were on 15 liter of oxygen so i was trying to figure it out how how we can help them. so i looked into and i came across a video of dr golwalkar and i listened to his uh, presentation and all that and then i contacted dr alamdari because i searched his his name so he did some studies and that's how we started collaborating so the he, methylene blue if you see it is having a preventive role in the prevention which is very very important as a general practitioner you should practice this to all our patients so they do not end up into hypoxia then it comes to the treatment part and as we learned here the treatment part if you start early when the patient is having a less oxidative stress you will get the good results and the conversion of leucomethylene blue which we are learning now can be a, we can have a formulation in due course of time then the third the nebulization in the patients who are having a post covid uh, fibrosis so th- all these three stages we can make use of this methylene blue as a repurposed drug in all these three, in all these but publication publication and publication thank you very much uh, may, may i please sure. something okay you know uh, may I please uh, i have the uh, committee uh, ethic uh, ethic uh, approval and i can share the com- uh, approval of uh, ethic committee to you as you want to run the clinical trial also i have the publications that also dr bushons it's my honor to take to took part in this clinical trial i will give this uh, papers and uh, ethic committee for you just we should organize that a pharmaceutical company produce this drug that it will be easy and available for pay your patients then you will got a very very good result i think we should organize all uh, steps and first of all okay the committee ethic, uh, ethic uh, committee approval that i will uh, give my papers and english con- uh, confirmation of ethic committee and also all other necessary documents if you want a clinical trial the second step we should 
consider a good supplier for our patients that Leucomitalin Blue along with other excipients that it is necessary for treatment should be supplied and is it available for your, for your patients, then you can run the clinical trial and I am sure that you can rescue a lot of patients that a lot of young people, a lot, a lot of people, if we will organize or uh, steps as Dr. Bouchon told. And uh, you know, if we further and further, further and further uh, save the patients, they believe us, you know, uh, already open, as Dr. Bouchon told, uh, uh, he had um, some patients that even with the standard therapy had uh, chronic hypoxemia and uh, they are already, I did for 46, uh, 46 patients that they had this problem with all standard treatment, they had a still chronic hypoxemia and they used in their home with the oxygen mask and it was very, very torture disease. But by using this Leucomitalin Blue along with other excipients, they really release from this torture and they become uh, completely healed and uh, go to the normal life. Dr. Babushan, when you started the treatment with Methylene Blue, what are the difficulties you found with the authority in your country? So, uh, because uh, there are some uh, issues with the Iran as a country, uh, with the US, and you may be all knowing about that. Yes. And so my institute said that uh, it will not be a good idea because there will be a conflict with the intellectual property laws and the laws relating to export and uh, import of material uh, regarding the safety and all that. You know, bioterrorism is one of the factor and it is one of the terms which we, you know, all know. So that was the reason and that's why I was not able to conduct uh, my trial. I mean, still uh, uh, I'm trying to do in a different way, but not uh, the, as we were talking about the import and export of the material, that was the one reason and the intellectual property exchange was another reason and the exchange of data of the patients. So these are the two difficulties. But, but uh, in my, uh, my colleagues in India and um, several of my family members and uh, my patients, uh, I, I was, you know, because I gave my number to them and I'm helping them out to uh, you know that how to treat that. And same thing with Dr. Alamdari has used an initial uh, uh, pre preparation, uh, the methylene blue, IV, and acetylcysteine and vitamin C. Uh, I suggested uh, to several patients and uh, they have recovered very uh, nicely. And, but it has to be used uh, in early part. If the patient, if you are using in a late part when there is a patient has developed multiple organ failure, uh, I was not able to save those patients. Uh, the, you know, you are completely right. In the late phase, the leucomethylene blue will not answer it. And we should consider other also pathological mechanisms that help the patients to recover. And already I found it and I can, I, I think the India is a very, very, now in very good uh, in, the, in, in these situations, can run this clinical trial and can get uh, rescue many patients. You know, the middle, but I am surprised why uh, there is a problem because already Leucomethylene Blue is FDA approved and has a long history and uh, there are many form of them in the uh, market, in the drug store market. And uh, uh, just we should convince the authority about the ethic approval but uh, because we have already uh, published paper about this matter, 
and uh, we have uh, results and uh, confirmation of ethic committee. I think in the India, it could be very easy to reach to this point. And uh, I would just I would... like to add. I would just like to add here that uh, now earlier the first wave was morally confined to these larger cities, and uh, now the after the mutation and the transmit the the infection rate of this uh, mutant virus is too high, and the people in the towns and the small city and small cities and towns and villages the the number of cases are getting very high, so it is very very important if we have something which is available to the people at their home. And they can pr practice these, you know, simple uh, simple things, which has been, uh, you know, very well uh, established by uh, uh, Dr. Goldwalker, uh, Dr. Uh, Kakaria, and Dr. Uh, uh, Ramesh Shah. So I think we should take the advantage of that as a general practitioner. We should encourage our patients to use this and see the results. That's what I would like to say at the level of uh, town and small cities and uh, uh, villages. Sir, uh, please uh, let me allow to speak. Can I speak? Yeah, please. Yeah. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, so first of all, my greetings to all the dignitaries present here and uh, especially uh, to the father of the Methylene Blue Revolution in India, Dr. Goldwalkar. I will give a very short introduction of myself. My name is Achal Agrawal. I am CEO of a pharmaceutical company called Maxon Drugs based at Udaipur. And... Uh, uh, we are one of the oldest um, into manufacturing pharmaceutical grade methylene blue. But today I, I, I would like to speak as a chemist. I, I, I'm not here to speak as a CEO of a company. And I would like to put some technical and legal aspects in a very fast manner uh, so that I don't consume a lot of time. So first of all, uh, leukomethylene blue. And uh, yeah, just before that, I just would like to tell that I'm not very experienced but I have spent almost 10,000 hours in doing methylene blue chemistry and synthesizing both methylene blue and leukomethylene blue. And I work closely with a company called Taurex Therapeutics, which have developed leukomethylene blue for Alzheimer's disease. Okay. So first of all, leukomethylene blue uh, in a stable powder form has been patented by a company called Vista Laboratory. All the stable powder form of leukomethylene blue, the dihydrochloride, dibromide, mesylate salt. Uh, otherwise, leukomethylene blue is not stable. It rapidly oxidizes back in presence of air. So to make it a stable powder form, you have to make a stable salt, which is like a mesylate or a dihydrochloride. So that is patented worldwide by Vista Laboratory, which is the leading company in the Alzheimer research. Apart from that, the leukomethylene blue cocktail, which Dr. Respected uh, Dr. Almadari is telling about using methylene blue, N-acetylcysteine and ascorbic acid. It is also patented for the COVID use. And uh, by, by uh, this patent is from Iran. And I, I believe that they must have uh, covered it uh, for a worldwide. So the COVID use of leukomethylene blue form of this methylene blue has been patented. So there are intellectual property issues in that. Apart from that, leukomethylene blue is, will be considered as a new drug as per the new drug and clinical trial rules of the DCGI. Leukomethylene blue will be considered as a new drug in India. So you, you need all the data right from the, uh, in, uh, from the uh, uh, from in vitro till you, you need to conduct a phase one, phase two, and phase three and uh, in India. So that is... Uh, uh, another issue with uh, methylene blue. Now, see, we have to understand a little bit chemistry, the biochemistry and you know, the pharmacokinetics of methylene blue. So methylene blue is a cyclic redox agent. So what do we, what is the meaning of a cyclic redox agent? It means that it can convert N number of times again and again into leuco and again reoxidize back into methylene blue, then again into leuco. So what happens when methylene blue is administered it, through the NADPH or the NADH uh, pathway, it first gets converted into the leuco form. And that is how, uh, so uh, methylene blue gets reduced to uh, the leukomethylene blue, okay, by gaining of electrons. Now it can become an electron donor. So what it does is that in the methemoglobin uh, reversal, into again the reduced hemoglobin, it, it gives those uh, electrons. 
to the oxidized hemoglobin, which is the meth hemoglobin. And that's how through the NADPH pathway, uh, this uh, meth hemoglobinemia is reversed. And the normal methylene blue is worldwide approved for methemoglobinemia. Leucomethylene blue is not yet been approved for methemoglobinemia. The normal methylene blue 1% uh, injection or the 0.5% injection called Prove Blue in US that has been approved for methemoglobinemia and it is being used to treat methemoglobinemia since maybe since 100 years. All right. So, Prove Blue is 1%, not 0.5%. Prove Blue is 0.5%. No, no, it is 5 milligram in 5 ml. Sir, Prove Blue, you can check again. Prove Blue is 0.5%. Okay. And the, the, the generic version, the grandfathered version since pre 1938, that is 1%. Okay, please uh, let me uh, complete. Okay, fine. Please. Yeah. So the problem, yeah, I accept that methylene blue in high doses, it can create oxidative stress. And also in the G6PD patients, with the patients who are having G6PD deficiency, methylene blue can create uh, oxidative stress. And apart from that, methylene blue is known to have a hormetic response. So what is a hormetic response? I think you must be knowing, you doctors, that a drug which initially gives a beneficial effect till certain dose and after a certain dose it reverses and the beneficial effect diminishes that is called a hormetic response so the dosage which dr goldwalker is recommending is much below that side of the curve it is much before that uh, the hormetic uh, where the the effect of beneficial effect of methylene blue diminishes it is very very low okay yeah, so, uh, yeah, and uh, and as I told that it is a cyclic redox agent. So even if I accept that leucomethylene blue is... Doctor, Mr. Agrawal, I will yeah. interrupt you. Uh, Mr. I think uh, most of the, uh, the delegates in this uh, today's webinar, they are doctors here. And uh, the pharmacopoeia, it's uh, getting a uh, little bit lengthy. Uh, if you can conclude or uh, that's okay change. i will i will conclude i will conclude very fast i will conclude very fast sir so uh, yeah so since methylene blue is action is cyclic so even if you administer the leuco form once it will it will after the first cycle it will convert into methylene blue thereafter what so i please explain that uh, so what will happen after the first cycle Leucomethylene blue immediately it, when goes inside the body, it will convert into methylene blue. So this is my one question. And my, my last uh, thing which I like put is that the virucidal effect, what, uh, see, what we are discussing about reversal of the methemoglobinemia, the reversal of oxidative stress, the cytokine, uh, control of the cytokine, it's good with leuco. But the virucidal effect, which Dr. Goldwalker is focusing, is due to the ionic nature of methylene blue. And as soon as you convert it into the leuco form, it is non-ionic. You can check the chemical structure. The hydrogen is added. It becomes non-ionic. So the non-ionic form will, uh, I doubt that it will give the virucidal effect, uh, which is the most important one in the profile axis. So that is what I just wanted to speak. And uh, thank you so much for this kind listening. Thank you. Sarji, I have one question for you. Yes, sir. You said that the whole uh, treatment is patented with ascorbic acid. So yes. as a pharmaceutical industry, you cannot do it. But as an individual doctor, can we use it individually? What sir, are the little problems we can face? Sir, I will suggest that uh, don't do it ex vivo, do it in vivo to, to skip the patent. Do it in vivo. You, you, you separately give ascorbic acid or N-acetylcysteine. Don't make it a cocktail. Yeah, and that's how you don't infringe. If you even want to make it leuco, you do it in vivo. You don't. If you if you make it ex vivo, you will infringe the patent. So as a doctor, also uh, the, uh, you are responsible uh, that you, uh, for the infringement of but the I, patent. I, I, I am extremely surprised that uh, the concept cannot be patented. You can it say can that be. concept cannot be patented. You can patent the amount of mixing. Sir, the use can be patented. 
I the use have... it it yeah see the the alzheimer use of methylene blue is patented by vista laboratories you can check the the use of methylene blue the 120 year old drug is patented already and this is also patented you can ask dr almadari that it, whether this use has been patented or not and whether he will give this patent uh, uh, to the indian public H how okay. may i please dr almadari is right here <laughs> yes uh, yes uh, dr uh, achal agrawal uh, uh, is uh, talking about the uh, form of uh, locomethylene blue that already is in uh, market. You know, I know this that a company in the India, excuse me, in the England, in the UK, use misylate methylene blue. This misylate methylene blue are used for Alzheimer disease. And Alzheimer disease, uh, um, they suggested that can be solved the aggregation of the protein in the, uh, the, the neural cells. And uh, they use the misylate locomethylene blue. It is very, very expensive. As I uh, asked the price of that, it is about 14 pound for one tablet. It is very expensive. And the other matter that uh, because the locomethylene blue are, they passed also already phase three clinical trial in Alzheimer patients, but they did not very successful in the result as they published the result in the Lancet. Uh, because, you know, uh, they passed the clinical trial phase three. I don't think it is necessary to do all the experiments for locomethylene blue again for using in the uh, human because they already they have they did it as the all the measurement for using a new drug as a locomethylene blue. Then we are very in the good uh, position that all this. Uh, test is done by them in the UK and it is okay uh, for them. Other matter that I want to draw your attention in the formulation that I will use in the powder for patients, the, I use the methylene blue for that it will convert it to glucomethylene blue, stable glucomethylene blue uh, during the, the time of using. And this is the advantage of the, this matter that you will use the methylene blue in your drug and you have the, after the preparation of the drug, you have the stable locomethylene blue after the using. And all our gradient are FDA approved and uh, the formulation is very easy to prepare and the patients are very easy to use and prepare it and no problem. You know, already we have uh, all the things in our hand and it is very easy to convince, to give the permission of clinical trial. Okay, Dr. Kakari, I think we are getting late now. If you can conclude that thing for the today, because it is almost quarter to 11 here in uh, India. So many of the people might be tired also because it's almost four hours here. So if Dr. Kakari, if you can conclude with some remarks or whatever. Uh, Dr. Hyman Joshi wanted to say something. Okay. You have to unmute Dr. Hyman Joshi, you have to unmute. You have to unmute. Me? No, Dr. Hyman Joshi. No, we, we can't. Yeah, he, he has muted himself. Yeah, okay. No, no, he must no, be in the no. audience, I think. Yeah, he's from the audience. Actually, uh, from uh, uh, Jaipur, uh, Mr. Raghubir uh, Thakur is there who can put some light on the legal issue about uh, the methylene blues uh, and the patients and all that. So, 
he is actually in fact sick he just came out of the uh, covid infection and he texted me that he wanted to say something about that will somebody allow him mr yeah. rakbir singh thakur dr thakur please uh, unmute yourself yeah he is there rs thakur mr thakur can you un unmute yourself unmute yourself yes yeah go ahead hello everybody <clears throat> actually my voice is not clear uh, it has become because of this post covid uh, uh, scenario i am yet to get my are you i am audible Yeah, please okay. continue, sir. Okay. So in India, I had I had I had been the regulatory department, drug control, regulatory department of the Rajasthan. We have a very set uh, procedure uh, how to go for the clinical trial. A new drug trial, new trial, clinical trial, two thousand seventeen has come in way, and here it is not a purely new drug. it is uh, to be uh, investigated or clinical trial is to be conducted for repurposing of uh, its use so that repurposing uh, is not that tough ethics committee are there in all the institutes uh, educational medical institute every institute is having a, a ethics committee and for finding such a uh, permission to start clinical trial for repurposing for different indication i don't think that it is a tough job but it should be all in a scientific manner and so far as the safety aspect is concerned it is well proven because it is given in the injectable form but other uses whatever indications you are uh, uh, suggesting that may be validated in the system on the uh, patients which are n numbers of the patients are available the six committee on the uh, proper approval by the committee the permission is granted and such a study can be conducted with the permission of the dgi and uh, another point with mr uh, uh, i think from maxam uh, he was talking about that uh, there is a uh, patent of the methylene blue or there is a patent of the cocktail okay the cocktail may be new but the patent for any product cannot be for n number of unlimited period of time there is a specific period for which a patent has uh, got its own uh, uh, impact after that the patent expires and uh, the things can be manufactured can be formulated and there is no problem in that because it cannot remain patented for 100 years so this is all a sort of info Sir. so my question is the patency as far as the company's concern is different mm. but a concept which is there to mix one drug with the other drug mm. is within the right of the practicing doctors no he, he has right for that point he has rightly said nobody can bind anyone to use the different type of the medications so will the practitioner be affected with this kind of patency if he is using in his own clinic no no this is there is no such uh, say if a formulation has been uh, approved it is it is mainly it is the new uh, new molecule and usually maybe the combination drug but it is for the new drug and i don't think that uh, such a thing can uh, uh, be patented you are right that way Definitely. and uh, Yeah, something which is for usage. Is, I believe that you can have a formulation means mixing one with other and creating the third one cannot be of something which I feel patented. It's a concept yeah. difficult to patent. You know? It has to be. It has to be examined now. Whatever you are talking, it has to be Because examined. See, if you develop an intraocular lens which is put inside the eye, the mm. company cannot say this is a patented because the concept is okay but he can patent the shape he can patent the design inside but he cannot patent the whole iom okay this is no. my iom nobody can make it that's what i'm saying
Uh, RC, I think we should now I conclude. We should now come to an end. Because we are going in another direction for yeah. which a separate webinar, a medical legal webinar may be necessary. But uh, yeah, here yeah. I would like to conclude uh, from my point of view as a, as a speaker and as a doctor to the general practitioners, Dr. Shubhamem, my input would be prevention is better than cure. Because cure is extremely complicated subject and you need hours and hours of discussion because you have to consider so many parameters in treating. So it, there cannot be any general guideline on a public platform. It is a case-to-case -case basis scenario or maybe some kind of classification, but not a point to be discussed here. But it is very, very simple to kill the corona before it starts colonizing your nasal mucosa or before they start colonizing your uh, paranasal sinuses and oral mucosa. And the simplest thing Dr. Golwalkar has found out is to take 4 ml 0.1% methylene blue in nebulizer, put it the mask on every day evening you come home. You believe that you have brought the virus and you don't want the virus to be given to your family. So as soon as you come home, the first thing you do is take nebulization and paint your nasal mucosa, your sinus, your throat and your lungs with adequate methylene blue. And here you don't need leukomethylene blue because the, as a person you are still healthy, your uh, oxi oxidative stress is uh, 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 I mean, within the limits, so you are not a patient. So, if Dr. Golwalkar at the age of 70 can work from 9 a.m. in the morning till 12.30 in the night, if he can see 80 to 90 COVID patients every day without mask, without PPE kit, and if 100 of his staff can do the same with him for one year without anybody coming positive, that is an example in itself. So, we just do what Dr. Goldwalker is doing to prevent the infection in himself and his staff. We just, it's period, you don't, you don't need any discussion. We just have to copy him, what he is doing. And you don't need any study, he is a case study in himself. You don't need any publication, anything at present till you, I mean, it's good to publish, but you don't need any randomized clinical trial. You just, just visit Dr. Goldwalker for one day and you will be convinced. So, so for all the general practitioners, my request is get hold tomorrow morning, get hold of one nebulizer and get hold of 0.1% methylene blue solution, make it from injection or make it from analytical grade reagent powder, as I described in my slides and start using it from tomorrow. And I can guarantee you on behalf of Dr. Gulwalkar that if you do it religiously every day in the evening or every day in the morning. Why evening I suggest is because you have come back with the viral load. And second reason for evening is that you don't want to go out with blue mouth. Uh, if you take it in the early morning before you go out, you will go with a blue mouth, blue tinge on your, on your nose and face and your mustache might become blue. So that's the reason why uh, my suggestion is evening, his suggestion uh, uh, is morning, but you need it once in 24 hours. So just do this and the corona will not be able to touch you. You will not develop infection. That is period. So I think from uh, today's webinar for the All India General Practitioners, this is something which is take home message that copy Dr. Golwalkar's method and protect uh, your staff, yourself and your family exactly as he is protecting his family. His wife is a gynecologist. She is so busy a gynecologist, she delivers caesarean of COVID positive pregnancies. Her wife has a staff of another 25 and neither she nor any of Dr. Lata Ben Goldwalkar's staff has come positive nor Dr. Goldwarkar and his 100 paramedical staff has come positive for last one year and not a single day stopped. Even on 25 March 2020, when the lockdown was announced, his clinic was open from 9 a.m. to 12 in the night. And Lata Ben Goldwarkar never stopped her clinic for a single day. She is working all the days. 
from the rigid most lockdown even at that time she was working dr golwalkar was working so we just need to copy them that's 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 my uh, uh take home message i mean i took that message from him one year ago and i suggest that uh, it's still not late for all of us to take that message from him. thank dr. you dr Daga, please. i thank all of thank you. you and i said dr sanjay to conclude this uh, webinar yes dr golwankar you want to see some say something dr kakadia was uh, telling that if you don't go out with blue mouth but if you go out with your blue mouth police will charge you 1000 rupees <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, that, that was another suggestion by dr golwankar let there be blue mouth but you put on the mask <laughs> and the blue mouth will be another reason for a compulsory put on a doctor alamdari there is 1000 rupees fine if you are not wearing the mask when you are out on the road in india so the joke is that that if you have blue mouth to to conceal the blue mouth you are going to to put the mask and that way you are going to save that 1000 rupees fine from the police 1000 rupees sorry sorry nice very nice <laughs> Dr. Sanjay, can you just conclude the session? No, unmute yourself, Sanjay, please. May I request Dr. Daga sir to call the All India President, Dr. Tembunikar sir, please. Dr. Tembunikar sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I am audible. Yeah, sir, your video yeah. is off. So, would I? Okay. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, uh, after the very informative and tiring session, all our guests uh, must be uh, very happy and exhausted also. Uh, so basically, uh, the take-home message is has been have been noted by our people, all the general practitioner who attended in a large number, uh, and they have noted this. And uh, from tomorrow only, they will start practicing this thing to save the uh, lives of their patients, their families, and themselves also. Uh, so uh, with this, I thank the Legion Dr. Deepak Golwalkar sir. Dr. Jag, uh, Jagdeep Kakadia sir, Alam Dari sir, uh, uh, and then Dr. Bharat Bhushan sir. With the uh, inclusion of these people, the CMB the webinar has become a global webinar. And uh, I really thank uh, Dr. Subha Rao and Sanjay Londe for uh, the help they have done. The, uh, uh, the help and the uh, hand of cooperation they have extended towards our association uh, as they are the active members of the association and last but not the least i uh, sincerely thank dr girish for the technical support he has given uh, to this webinar and uh, with this i thank all the dignitaries and uh, for this very 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 informative and uh, life saving uh, uh, webinar or life saving a uh, chunk of knowledge they have given to our people uh, so uh, thank you all uh, for this and uh, we'll extend this cooperation uh, in future also with this i uh, conclude this session thank you you are welcome have a nice time and good luck it's my pleasure good luck thank you everybody thank you thank you thank you bye thank you everybody Goodbye, Doctor Alamdari. Goodbye, bye, bye. Good Have a nice time and good luck. Be happy. Stay safe. Thank good you luck. and good bye. night all. Thanks bye. for sharing all the knowledge and experiences. With us. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Have a nice time and goodbye. Bye. 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 Sanjay yes, sir, should I conclude? Should I end the meeting? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please end the meeting. Chalo. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Take care.